praise to the most. All praise to the most high. All praises. How are you sisters doing the Sabbath? Go praises. Brothers, how are y'all doing? All right. Brothers and sisters at the venue, we say shalom. I apologize for not being there, but Austin dropped the ball again, and they're not able to broadcast, so we had to broadcast from here. But we will be over there, God willing, right after class. We'll be over there immediately, right? Okay. Lord's will, Lord's will. All right. Uh, captains, how are y'all doing? Who's reading for me? Captain get a light, Bishop. Okay, all praises. Um, today's lesson is going to go into a little bit of history, so I need y'all to pay close attention, especially uh, Captain Enoch. Um, we are going to discuss the atom bomb from Nazis to NASA. All right, the IT department, are they, y'all up and running? Okay, that's right. All right, all praises. Let's, let's start off with a little bit of history. Give me the first critical review of Annals of Literature, please. All right, who read that, Captain Gedaliah? Yes, sir. Critical Review or Annals of Literature by a Society of Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, is that, what's that, 17? Is that 1700? At the bottom? No, I don't remember. Uh, okay. Give me the next page. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read the highlights. Yes, sir. All right. The trade soon increased to that, so that in 1455, no less than seven or eight hundred Negro slaves were annually explored to Lisbon. Exported. Exported, excuse me, to Lisbon. At length, the Portuguese in 1471 discovered the Gold Coast. And ever since, the intercourse between Portugal and Guinea was continued. Next highlighted section. The discovery of the Gold Coast served. Now, I know the Gold Coast is Ghana. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Indeed, yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese than their slave trade, but it forced them also to extend themselves on the coasts and to settle colonies in Congo, Angola, and other places, which they had, which they had till they neglected. Read straight through. Prince Henry's colonies uh, were enlarged by the successors. King John II, 1492, expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471, and to, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. So St. Thomas is, on, is an island off the coast of Africa. Go ahead. And from these banished Jews. What I want you to see is that they're calling those Africans banished Jews. Read that part again. And from, and from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Loango, and are despised. Who? Who, who, who are, are, excuse me, who are despised even by the very Negroes are descended. So those banished Jews are descended from Negroes, the Negroes that they found on the continent of Africa. Was there another highlighted section? Go ahead, read that bottom part. Yes, sir. In the beginning of the 16th century, the Spaniards and the Portuguese began to transport Negroes for, for similar labors. And the West Indies... To, to the West Indies. To the West Indies and... Was that Brazil? Brazil's. Brazil's. By which the Negroes' trade was rapidly increased. So I started off with this bit of history because I want y'all to see and understand that all the old books declared and taught that the blacks... In Spain and Portugal, taken to the continent of Africa, were Jews. They were Jews. Now, when we jump up, give me the next, uh, the next page. The church. Yep, right there. This is in Russia. This is in Russia. Give me the next page. Now, I want you all to see the black images. Now, I went over this many times before but I know that there may be new people with us. We ruled Russia, we ruled all Europe for over a thousand years. No, we weren't the most righteous people, but one thing we did know is that we have always known we were the Israelites, the Jews, okay? As you can see, the black images of the saints, the martyrs, the Israelites on the walls of this cathedral in Russia. Give me the next one. Okay, as you can see, in uh, these are the, many of the patriarchs. Raise it up. You can see some of the angels are black on the wall. Uh, there's one with Christ. Yeah, right there. Christ is in the center. Mary's on 
my left, uh, you got John, you got the angels, uh, Michael, and Uriel, and Gabriel on either side. Go back to the top again, raise it up. Yeah, you can sit there. You can see all the black images of the Israelites, the Jews, on the walls of this cathedral. All right, now let's go to the next page. This is from another book. Can you read that, Gedele? <clears throat> yes, sir. Negro Judaism. Above, Gold Coast chief. He came 100 miles to Accra on the coast to have his picture taken. His robe was uh, Arabic and Hebrew charms. Can we look at the... Uh, Brother from Accra, Ghana. Nope, up, up. All right, that's him. Mm. So his garment had Arabic and Hebrew uh, charms and writings on it. Okay, why? Because these were the Jews. These were the Jews. Now you may ask yourself, so what happened to a lot of that history of us knowing who we are? Well, we're going to touch on that today. Right, go back down. Read the long one, left. Left, a Jew. Snapped in a street procession of Jews in New York. So in New York, this brother right here knew he was a Jew. Okay. Give me the next page. Read that. Yes, sir. Negro Judaism. Left. Rabbi Harling Hank Lint of or Bishop A.W. Cook of Montclair, New Jersey. He announces that the Negroes are the only real Hebrews. That's right. So he had that going for him. He knew that. Go ahead. Right. Bata Kendai Mgoza, Ibn Lo Bagalo, a Yoruba Negro Jew of the Emo Yo Kwam of Benai or Benai Ephraim of southern Nigeria. Right. So the Yoruba Jews. Right. Low, yeah. That's him on the left. And the first one you read about is him on the right. Notice they are black men. So now let's go into the next book. Read that. The Jews, a study of race and environment by Maurice Fishberg. Raise it up. The Walter Scott Publishing Company, LTD. Right. Look at the 19, year, 1911. 1911, yes, now sir. Now let's see what he wrote on page 64. <clears throat> Next page. Re zoom in. Read that highlighted area. These fair-haired Jews created a problem. Talk about white folks. For, for anthropologists. It is a question of... Whence these Indo Germanic Germanic Jews, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. So he's bringing out the controversy white folks saying they're Jews, but the Jews have always been known as being black. Mm. So now it caused a controversy, a problem for anthropologists. Mm. So now let's go in, let's go to Genesis. Thank you. So that was a little bit of opening with history. Let's go to Genesis 25, and let's start at verse 21. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, and verse 21. <clears throat> and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. NIT, if y'all got some more images for me, because I don't have all the images, I'm trusting y'all be able to just find some on your own. Read that, I'm sorry. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. The Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So now his wife initially could not get pregnant. But then the Lord uh, allowed them to be blessed and she conceived. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. Children, notice, children, more than one. Go ahead. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Meaning if the Lord has blessed me, why am I having trouble in this childbirth? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Meaning those children are the origin or the beginnings or the genesis of two nations. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two manner of people, meaning two different types of people, shall be separated. Meaning what? What kind of twins were they? They were fraternal, not identical. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Stronger mentally and physically. That's us, able to endure great hardness, hardships. Go ahead. The elder shall serve the younger. And the elder child shall serve the younger. Talking about in the kingdom. It's prophetic. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Mm -hmm. and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So his name was called Esau. Write this down. Esau means wasted away is he. 
Wasted away is he. That's what it means. Red, Esau does not mean red. Esau does not mean hairy. We'll get to that a little later on. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So what I want you all to notice, you knew brothers and sisters at home, they never give the color of Jacob. They gave the color of Esau being red. Why didn't they give the color of Jacob? Because he was the same complexion as his mother and father. And everybody else from Genesis 2, verse 7. Get that for me. Genesis 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. I want to take a look at some dust of the ground. Do we have any? IT, do we have any? I know I'm asking a lot. I know if I'm going too quick, y'all let me know. Dust of the ground. You could Google it if y'all ain't got it in the folders. Uh, holding soil in hand, uh, I guess you could just type that in. I just want the men and women at home to see it. Holding soil in hand. Right there. Notice the soil. That's the color Adam was. Now look at the hand of the white folks. Hey, find me one with a black man holding the soil. They got some. You got me, IT? Come on. I want a black man holding the soil. Black hands holding soil. It should be right there on the same Google page. All right, let me know when y'all get it. Uh, let's go back to Genesis 25. What verse did you leave off at? We left off at uh, verse, we was about to read verse Oh, you got 26. me? Go ahead, put it on the screen. I want y'all to see the comparison now. Look at the black man holding the earth. So read Genesis 2, 7 one more again. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Mm-hmm. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the dust of the ground is the same color as the man. Now watch, the, give me Genesis 1, is it 26? Yes, sir. Give me that. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. So, the so Adam looked just like God. Same complexion. Y'all, you ain't got to be ashamed to say it. You ain't got to be ashamed. You got to whisper it. You ain't got to whisper it. Adam looked just like God. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. That's what you're seeing right there. That's what you're seeing right there. Go on back, Captain Gidelai. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 25, verse 27. Mm -hmm. and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man. Dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Write this down. Edom means red. Do you have the Bible dictionary with Edom? What it means? The definition of the word? You got that? If you ain't got it, it's all right. Just let me know. Do y'all have it? Azariah? No. Okay. Edom means red. Write that down. Edom means red. I want all the schools. Y'all should have folders with this stuff. From there, let's go to Genesis 36. Do I want Genesis 36? Mm. Yeah. Genesis 36, and I want to start at verse 8. The book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Write this down. Seir, S-E-I-R, means hairy. Seir, S-E-I-R, means hairy. It was a range of mountains that was sharp, and it was, looked like hair. Read it again. Yes, sir. Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. Read. 
And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites. The in father Mount of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Now jump down for me. Jump down to verse. Let me look. Let me look. I want verse 15. Yes, sir. Genesis 36 and 15. These were dukes of, of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn, son of Esau, Duke Teman. Duke, Duke Teman. Pay, highlight that one right or write it in your notes. Duke Teman. We're going to talk about Teman in a moment. Go ahead. Duke Omar. Mm -hmm. Duke Zepho. Duke Kinaz. Duke Korah. Duke Gotham. Duke and Duke Amalek. We're going to write down Duke Amalek. We're going to talk about them too. Go ahead. These are the dukes that came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Adah. Right. So now, so now, watch this. What happened during the Babylonian captivity? What happened? Give me first Ezra chapter four. I want you to pay very close attention. I'm going to take you on a history route. First Ezra chapter four cap, and let's start at verse 42. Yes, sir. First Ezra chapter four and verse 42. Then said the king unto him, ask what thou wilt more. Now, let me fill in the gap for you. This, during, this is during the, uh, actually, this is Persia. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is just after the uh, conquest of Babylon, okay? Uh, Zerubbabel is given a task, him and two others, who has the wisest uh, answer, okay? And Zerubbabel says, the, who's, what is the strongest thing on earth? And Zerubbabel had the best, best answer. He said, uh, women and the truth. So Zerubbabel, which was the king's bodyguard, won. Now listen good to what he says to the king in 1 Ezra 442. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 42. This might be the king's response. I'm trying to remember. But yes, go ahead, sir. read on. Then said the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt more than is appointed in the writing, mm -hmm. and we will give it thee, because thou art found wisest, and thou shalt sit next me, and shalt be called my cousin. Then said he unto the king, Remember thy vow, which thou, which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem. In the day when thou camest to thy kingdom. So this is what Zerubbabel, the Israelite, is saying to the king of Persia. Go ahead. And to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem, which Cyrus set apart, when, when he vowed to destroy Babylon and to send them again thither. Because Cyrus had made a vow to destroy Babylon and to send Israel back to the homeland. Watch this. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Notice who helped, who burned down the temple. It was the Edomites. Go ahead. And now, O Lord the King, this is that hey, which can I... can you put some pictures of the Edomites on the screen for me while we're talking? Read that part again. Yes, for sir. For IT, because they ain't paying attention. Yes, sir. Verse 45. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned with, when uh, Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. I ain't see one Edomite on the screen yet. Can y'all put Esau, the red guy, back on the screen? Now, I want, I want the ancient pictures. I don't want the modern ones. Give me the ancient ones. Yep, right there. Read it again, Cap. Now, now we in sync. I think we in tune with IT now. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse 45. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Because the Edomites worked with the Chaldeans, which were the Babylonians. The Edomites worked with them. Now watch this. And now, O Lord the King, this is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And this is the pr princely liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire, therefore, that thou make good, thy vow, make good the vow, the performance whereof with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven. Then Darius, the king, stood up and kissed him and wrote letters for him unto all the treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safely convey on their way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. He wrote letters also to the lieutenants that were in uh, so, Celio Syria and fin and Finis, and unto them of Labanus. Okay, hold on. Y'all could take Esau off the screen now. Thank you. Go ahead. That they should bring cedar wood from Libanus 
unto Jerusalem, and that they should build the city with him. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm. Pay close attention to this. Read that again. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm unto, up, into, up into Jewry concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, nor treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors. Here it comes. And that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute, and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews which they which then they held. So when Babylon destroyed Israel, the Edomites took over the land. That's what I want you all to see. The Edomites took over the land during the time of Babylon. So now it's going it's way past 70 years later. Okay, Persia's in power. We still haven't been released yet. So now we're coming back to the land, but in order to get back, it's a hey, those Edomites took our land. Okay, we need them to get out of our land. So the king made a decree to get rid of those Edomites out of the land. So now watch this. Something else happened during the time of Persia. Give me Esther chapter 8, verse 17. The book of Esther chapter 8 and verse 17. Pay close attention. And in every province... And in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness. Now, this is the feast of Purim. Haman had set up a plot to kill us, kill all the Jews that was in Persia. So Queen Esther used her authority, her and her, with her uncle Mordecai, to overthrow Haman's judgment. And she revealed that she was a Jew that Haman wanted to kill. The king was wroth, and he allowed the Israelites to fight back. And to save themselves. Read that again, verse 17. Yes, sir. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So I want you all to notice this was a time of conversion. Meaning what? Many of the people followed our customs, our traditions. They were not Jews. But it said, and many of the people of the land became Jews. Many, they followed our customs, our laws, our traditions. Highlight that verse. From there, that was during Persia. So remember, during the Babylonian captivity, Esau took the land. During Persian captivity, uh, many people became Jews. Now we go into the next captivity, was the Greek captivity. Okay, you had a young man named John Hycranus, who was the son of Simon Maccabee. Give me that in 1 Maccabee 13, 53. Yes, pay sir. attention, pay attention. The book of 1 Maccabee, chapter 13, verse 53. When Simon saw that John, his son, was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the host, and he dwelt in Gazara. So what did John Hycranus do? What did he become famous for? Uh, IT, you should have a link that says John Hycranus from the book, from the Britannica Library. Should be a link there saying John Hycranus, King of Judea, Britannica. Yep. You see that, Cap? Can you read that for us? Yes, sir. I can't see it on my screen yet. All right, can you get it all? Yeah, there thank you. you. John Hycranus, the first, king of Judea. Go all the way down. Let's get to the main point right here. John Hycranus, the first, born C-175 B.C., died 104 B.C., high priest and ruler of the Jewish nation from 135, 134 to 104 B.C. Now, they always throw that word ish in there, but he was not Jewish. He was mm -hmm. Judean. Okay, he was a true, a real Israelite, son of Simon. Good. Under his reign, the Hasmonean kingdom of Judea in ancient Palestine attained power and great prosperity. And the Pharisees, a scholarly sect with popular backing, and the Sadducees, an uh, aristocratic sect that, comp that comprised the priesthood, became well-defined religious parties. So these two groups, the Pharisees and Sadducees, you read about them in a book of Maccabees called the Assidians, mm -hmm. okay? And the Sadducees descend from the sons of 
Zadok. Read. Hycranus was the youngest son of Simon Maccabeus and thus a member of the Hasmonean dynasty, so-called after an ancestor named Hasmonius. In 137 BC, he and his brother Judas commanded the force that heroically repelled the invasion of Judea led by Sendebius, uh, the general of the Syrian king Antiochus the Seventh, cited. In 135, Hycranus's brother-in-law, Ptolemy, the governor of Jericho, assassinated Hycranus's father and two elder brothers. Hycranus then succeeded to the high priesthood and the supreme authority in Judea. The remainder of Hycranus's reign was marked by his efforts to punish his enemies, ward off the Syrians, and enlarge Judea's borders, or boundary, excuse me. Although he struggled in vain to destroy Ptolemy, he successfully thwarted uh, Syrian incur incursions by, by alliance with Rome and conquered the unfriendly neighboring territories of Samaria and Idumea. So Edom. now, one pause right there. Remember, Rome were Edomites already, but they went under the name Rome. You had another group of Edomites that were called, that went by the name Edom or Idumea. But Rome and them were the same race, the same people. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, he forced Idumia to convert to Judaism. Read it again. He, he forced Idumia to convert to Judaism. John Hycranus forced Idumia to convert to Judaism. So that group of Edomites that was in Idumia, he forced them mm -hmm. to get circumcised and to follow the laws of God. Read. The first example of conversion imposed by the Jews in their history. He's the first example of conversion imposed by the Jews in their history. Go ahead. Upon his death, Hycranus was succeeded by his eldest son, Aristobulus I. Hycranus' reign was the last under which Judea was a powerful united state. Now, IT, give me the next book I sent you. It says Con Converts Among Semitic Tribes. Converts Among Semitic Tribes. Yep. Read the highlighted section. Yes, sir. Josephus recorded that the army of John Hycranus, the high priest of Judea, reigned 134 to 104 BCE, took possession of Dora and Marissa. Remember, BC is before Christ existed. Go ahead. Which were cities of Idumea. Mm -hmm. After conquering the Idumeans, Hycranus let the Idumeans stay in their land on the condition that they would be circumcised and observe the Jewish laws. See what John Hycranus did? He let them stay in the land on the condition mm. that they would be circumcised and observe Jewish laws, Judean laws. Go ahead. In this way, the Idumeans, descendants of Esau, became Jews by force rather than by choice. So I want you to notice that. In this way, the Idumeans, descendants of Esau, became Jews by force rather than by choice. Pay close attention there. Now. Give me the next height. Give me the next. It's a Wikipedia I sent you. So during the Roman Empire, there was a man named Antipater. And let's go down to, now Antipater, go back. Antipater was an Idumian. Idumian is another word for Edom. Go down to the section that says background. His background, right there. Click that. Let's read that. Though historians understand that Antipater's family converted to Judaism in the second century BCE, different stories had circulated in the wake of his sons coming to power. They demonstrate the tensions that existed between the Jewish people and the powerful Edomites who appear at this time. So why were they powerful at this time? Because Rome, mm -hmm. their brother's Rome, was in power. Go ahead. Nicholas of Damascus. Now pay attention what Nicholas of Damascus does. The court historian for Herod. He was the court historian for Herod. We're going to read it by Herod in a minute. Go ahead. Wrote that Herod's ancestors were among the historical elite in Jerusalem who had been taken by King Nebuchadnezzar into Babylonian captivity in the 6th century BCE. Now that's a lie right there. Because these Edomites were not taken into Babylonian captivity. What they're trying to do is blur the lines between the real Jews and these converts. Read on. This account serves two purposes. When the Persian king Cyrus sent the captives in Babylon back to Judea, 
it is likely that some chose to settle elsewhere. A legitimate, go, scroll down, raise it up. A legitimate dispersion such as this would shroud. Wait, the, wait, a legitimate dispersion such as this would shroud, sh would shroud the fact that Herod's ancestry is undocumented in the meticulous records of returned Jewish families. Meaning what? His history, Herod's history was not found in the returning Israelites that came from Persia back to Israel. Mm. Go ahead. Claiming a heritage among the Jews from as early as the Babylonian captivity provides credibility for a pro-Roman and Hellenized Herod as a king over the Jews, for they were highly contemptuous of him. So they said, let's, bl let's blur the lines. Let's create lies so that maybe the Israelites will accept him. If we can convince them that they were is that Herod was a real Israelite through his ancestry, he'll be accepted. But Israel already knew this dude was Edomite. Go ahead. Josephus explains this rendering by critiquing its author. Nicholas wrote to please Herod and would do so at the cost of, tr of truthfulness. See that? Nicholas wrote to please Herod and would do so at the cost of truthfulness. Mm. So this guy would lie for Herod. We don't. Instead, Josephus explains that Antipater's family converted to Judaism during the forced conversions by the Sadducee influence Hasmonean leader John Hycranus. So uh, Josephus had to come with the truth now. He said, This guy for Herod is lying. The real issue on Herod is that he's a convert. John Hycranus forced these Idumeans to be converted to Judaism. Go ahead. Hycranus threatened that any Idumean who wished to maintain their land would need to be circumcised and enter into the traditions of the Jews. Mm. Josephus acknowledges Herod as being a by birth a Jew and Antipater as being of the same people mm -hmm. with the Jews. Nevertheless, this influential family came to be resented by many Jews for Which their, were the real Jews. Why? For their Edomite ancestry. For their Edomite ancestry. Go ahead. A fact used by the Hasmoneans and their supporters against them. So what I want y'all to see is how Esau always tried to blur the line. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, the author said, how is this group of Indo-Germanics found their ways into a black race like the Jews? Mm. This is how they did it, by lying, by lies. Go ahead. Pull it back up, please. Where are you at? Um, I'm going to go back to uh, nevertheless. nevertheless. Nevertheless, this influential family came to be resented by many Jews for their Edomite ancestry, a fact used by the Hasmoneans as their supporters against them. As such, in a po polemic, polemic against Herod to discredit him <clears throat> in the eyes of the Romans as unfit to become king of the Jews. Why? Because Rome was setting Herod up as king of the Jews. We're going to read that in a minute. Go ahead. Antagonist the Hasmonean is quoted by Josephus as referring to Herod as no more than a private man and an Idumean, i.e. a half-Jew. Meaning a convert. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5 about Herod. Sir, the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 5. There was, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of, of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So what I want you to see is that very first sentence. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. Herod the Idumean was set up as king over our people. Now, give me the, the next, yes, this genealogy, put it on the screen. Uh, get a lie, can you see it? Yes, sir, I can see it now, yes, sir. Now, when you read the names, I want you to read the scriptures for our people at home. Read that. Yes, sir, Antipater. Antipater II and uh, Cyprus, his wife. Faziel, Herod the Great, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 22, and Luke chapter 1, verse 5. So what we just read in Luke 1 and 5 is Herod the Great, the descendant of Antipater. Antipater was one of those that was forcibly converted to being a Jew during the time of John Hycranus. Now we're going to read his descendants. 
Just read the key ones where you, where you see the scriptures at. Yes, sir. So, Descendants of Herod the Great by uh, Mary, Miriam. Uh, Herod Philip, first husband of Herodias. Matthew chapter 14, verse 3. So, Herod Philip, Matthew 14, verse 3. Go ahead. Of his wife Cle uh, Cleopatra of Jerusalem. Philip, the tetrarch of uh, Ituria, Tri Triconitis, and nearby districts. Luke chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, his his uh, descendants from Malthus, uh, Ar Archelaus, 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 excuse me, king of Judea, later on, uh, later an ethnarch. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter two verse twenty two. So Matthew chapter two verse twenty two. Go ahead. Antipas. Antipas. Go ahead. Tet Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea, popul popularly referred to as king, second husband of Herodias. Matthew chapter fourteen verse one through twelve. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 14 through 29, Luke 3 and 1, 19, 20, 13 and 31, 32, 23, verse 6 through 15, and Acts chapter 4, verse 27 and 13 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now, Agrippa the first. Ag uh, Agrippa the first, king of Palestine. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 6. So that's the one that killed uh, James. Go ahead. 18 through 23. Mm hmm. Herodias, mother of Salome, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 14, verse 3, 4, 6 through 8. That's the one that wanted uh, John the Baptist's head on a platter. These are all Herod's uh, descendants. Mm. These are all Edomite converts. Go ahead. Agrippa II, king of Chalcis, later given territory formerly of Philip the Tetrarch and other areas. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 25, verse 13, 22 through 27, 26, verse 1. 2, 19 through 32. Mm -hmm. Drusilla, wife of Felix, Acts 24, 24. Bernice, Acts 25, 13, 23, uh, 26, and 30. Read the next line. Herod the Great had five other wives. He had five other wives. And 15 children in all. 15. So when you're reading in the New Testament about these kings and all of that, these leaders, these are all Edomites, converts, converts. That's why, hey, where's the one about Agrippa? Go, go back. Let me look. Where's Agrippa at? Okay. Y'all see, because uh, they didn't got it. No, Agrippa II. You see it says Acts 26. Read that, Gilead. Acts yes, 20. Acts 26, 1 and 2. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 26 and verse 1. Acts 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before the touching of all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Go ahead. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. How was he expert? Why was he expert? Because he was raised learning Jew Judean laws and customs. That's why he was expert. Now watch this. Jump to chapter 25 and verse 22 and 23. Watch this. These are two more Herod's kids. These are uh, Edomites, converts. Go ahead. Acts chapter 25, verse, you said verse 22, right, Bishop? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great pomp, and was entered into the place of the hearing. Notice Bernice right there. It says, uh, put it on the screen. We don't need me on the screen. Acts 25, 13. That's Bernice. This is one of the daughter's descendants. Read that again. Yes, sir. And on the morrow when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp. You know what great pomp means? When she came in, a big orchestra played when she came in. Mm. Go ahead. And was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city. As Festus commanded, commandment, Paul was fo brought forth. Mm -hmm. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, see ye see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have, dwelt, have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. So these are all Edomites. These are all converts. They are all Jewish. All of them, Jewish. Oh, I got a bomb, finally. So now, from now, I'm showing you various conversions. Now we're going to jump up to the Dark Ages. Write this down. Dark Ages, we're going to examine the seventh 
to the 10th century. 7th to the 10th century. Put that on the screen. Cap, read that. Yes, sir. What period were the Khazars? The Khazar Empire, CA 650 to CA 965 68. Uh, one of the largest states of medieval Eurasia dominated a region from the Ukrainian steeps to lands approaching the Ure Ural River and from the middle Volga region to the North Caucasus and Crimea. I know y'all missed that, right? I know y'all missed that. It said the Khazar Empire dominated a region from the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. We're going to talk about them. Give me the next, pic the next page. Introduction. Introduction. Yep, zoom in. Read that. Yes, sir. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of the Khazar's history was their adoption of the Jewish religion. Ah, more conversion of these white folks. Go ahead. For centuries, the Khazar territory was a major region of settlement for Jewish refugees escaping persecution. And their refugees soon introduced Judaism to the Khazars. The king of Khazaria, Bullen, became convinced. So write his name down, Bullen. His first name was Cajun. Cajun Bullen. Go ahead. Became, he was the king. Became convinced that Judaism was the true religion. And under his leadership and that of his successors, some of the Khazar people also adopted Judaism. Some of the Khazar people also adopted Judaism. Go ahead. Synagogues and yeshivas were established in Khazaria. Pay attention. Synagogues and yeshivas were established in Khazaria. This is in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Go ahead. And the study of the Torah and Talmud became commonplace. Ah, you see what they studied? The Torah and Talmud. Mm -hmm. The Talmud, that, that's a book of like oral traditions where they hate anything, any mention of Christ. Go ahead. The Khazars uh, underscored their allegiance to the Jewish faith by adopting the Hebrew script and Hebrew personal names, even to the extent of naming some of their children after Jewish holidays, such as Pesach or Hanukkah. Jews lived in many of the major Khazar towns. Khazaria ex exert exerted a tremendous impact on world history. Mm. The Khazars persisted. You know, no, you know what's odd about that? It says that Khazaria exerted a tremendous impact on world history. But in school, they don't teach us about Khazaria. Mm. I never, you, you would learn about Khazaria in school? I ain't yes, learned about no Khazaria in school. Yes, but it exerted a tremendous impact on world history. Go ahead. Khazaria exerted a tremendous impact on world history. The Khazars, persistent against Arab invaders, eventually halted their conquest north of the Caucasus. Now, let's get the next page, page 8 of chapter 1. Zoom in. Pay attention. The medieval German legend of the Red Jews. Of the what? Red so Jews. So these people were called the Red Jews. Remember what it said about Esau? The first came out what? Red. Red. Go ahead. Derived from a combination of three of these stories. One, about Alexander the Great's enclo enclosure of monstrous nation behind a large mountain northeast of the Mediterranean. Two, about Gog and Magog, said to be the- Gog and Magog is up there in Khazaria. Go ahead. Said to be the destroyers of the world at the end of time. Mm -hmm, that's them right there. Go ahead. <laughs> and three, about the ten lost tribes of Israel. That's what they Israel. try to say they are. They're trying to say they're the lost, lost mm -hmm. tribes of Israel, but they're not. Go ahead. German writers used the Red Jews legend to express anti-Jewish sentiments and fears about the anticipated apocalypse. Mm -hmm. The term Red Jews was chosen because medieval Germans saw red hair and red beards as signs of dishonest, deceitful individuals. Y'all see that? Y'all see right. that? Now, hey, hey. Give me, give me, give, hey, give me the pictures of these people. Give me the pictures. Give me the pictures of these red Jews. Yep, yep, this is dumb. This is dumb. And notice, Dang. these, the way they dress with that hat, with the Bolshevik hat. Bolshevik, that's one of their words. With the, the curly locks. None of that is biblical. None of that is God's law. That's all Khazar. The way they dress comes from Khazaria. 
People be like, where's the, ask these people, where's that in the, that dress code in the Bible? It's not in there. But the world believes it. The world believes it. Wow. From there, give me the Jewish encyclopedia, please. That's right. Now, I wanted to get this because their scholars wrote about themselves. Now, their Jewish encyclopedia was only meant for their people. Little did they know that Negroes would start to expand their horizon from the African-American lousy book section and go to their book section and start to, you know, inquire. Inquiring minds want to know. So this is from the Jewish Encyclopedia, yes, the history, religion, literature, and customs of the Jewish people from the earliest times to the present day. Read that next section right there, Gilai. Yes, sir. Prepared by more than 400 scholars and specialists. So this ain't prepared by Negroes. This is prepared by white folks whom they deem, 400 white folks they deem scholars, so-called Jewish scholars. Let's go inside the book. Now, what I want you all to see, see the highlighted, it says Khazars. Yes, sir. But notice the difference in the spelling. They got a C rather than a K, but it's the same word. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. That's what they do. Now. Give me the next page. Read that. As the as the is that head as the headwaters of the Donets in the province of Lebedia. Uh, skip down and highlight. It was probably about the time that the sh shagging of the Khazars and his grandees, together with a large number of his heathen people. Embrace the Jewish religion. This is what their scholars put together. This isn't us being, as they call us, racist or hateful. Their people put this together. Give me the next page. Now watch this. In this letter, Hasdai speaks. In this letter, Hasdai speaks of the tradition according to which the Khazars once dwelt near the Sierra Mountains. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back to Genesis 36. And what was that, verse 8? Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 36 and verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. So they know that these people are Edomites. That's right. They know that they're Edomites. Now watch this. So what happened? What happened? How did they become the Jews and we became niggas and spicks? How in the hell did this happen? Get Ecclesiasticus chapter 12. Sir. And let's start at verse 10. We read this all the time. The Watch book, this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. Uh-oh. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So never trust your enemy. This is God speaking here through Sirach. Never trust your enemies. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Just like you get a piece of iron, it might look good today, but in a couple of weeks or months, the rust will start to form. God says your enemies like that. Their wickedness will start to reveal itself. Watch this. Read on. Though he humble himself. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. Though he humble himself. And go crouching. And go crouching saying, I'm sorry. I love you. Go ahead. Yet take good heed and beware of him. Mm -hmm. and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. No matter how much he humbles himself, how much he says, sorry, and I love you, I want to work with you, God says take good heed of him because he'll be to you like a looking glass. When you wipe a mirror, when you get out the shower and you can see it clear now, this Bible, this Bible is that looking glass. You can see him clear now. It's, ah, no, that wickedness is still there. Watch the next verse. This is the part we wanted to get to, verse 12. Verse 12. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Wait, wait, wait. He'll do what? Read that again. Yet, said, excuse me, set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Now, watch. When we, when they converted during the time of the 7th to the 10th century, we set them by us in Spain and Portugal. We set them by us. If y'all look at the movie, ever see this movie called Othello starring Lawrence Fishburne? He was the last Moor in Spain. 
and all his Edomite friends were plotting against him to overthrow him. Mm. The word more means blacks, by the way. So read verse 12 again. Yes, sir. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. Lest he seek to take thy seat. Go ahead. And thou at the, la at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Y'all see that? Mm. He said, your, God says your enemy will take your place. We didn't believe that. No, 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 Lord. These are some nice people. In fact, Lord, we converted them to being Jewish. They're nice to us. Well, what happened? Give me Psalms 83. Let's read 3 to 5. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. God's enemies took crafty counsel against us. We're the people of God. It says they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. We're the hidden ones now. Why? Because the truth of who we are has been hidden in the earth. Come on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They have said, our enemies have said, let's cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Aha, uh -huh. go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Who? Who, Lord? Who? Read. The, the tabernacles of Edom. Enemy number one, Edom. Enemy number one, Edom. God warned us from way back when. Don't set them by you. They'll seek to take your place. We said, mm, you, nah, we know more than you, Lord. We are smarter than you, God. And look what happened. Look what happened. Now, watch this. Give me Micah 2 and 1. Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Ah, uh, work evil upon their beds. Go ahead. When the morning is light, when the morning is light, it. they practice it. They practice the evil they dreamed and thought about the night before. Go ahead. Because it is in the power of their hands. Because they had military power. Go ahead. And they covered fields. They covered fields, meaning lands. And take them by violence. And take them by violence. Go ahead. And how? Wait, 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 wait. How did they take the land of Israel during the time of Babylon? By violence. Yep. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And they covered fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. Mm -hmm. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Ah, uh, you see that? They oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage. What does that mean? They became the Jews. They became the Jews. Give me the picture. Give me the picture in Spain. What happened in Spain from the 7th to the 10th century? Oh, look what they did to us. They enslaved us. Mm. They enslaved us. We became the niggers and the spicks and the Africans. They became the Jews. The Lord warned us about this. He warned us about this. Give me the next page in the next book. Let's read this. This is uh, J.A. Rogers. Highlighted areas, please. Yes, sir. Waite says, as interesting, as interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Oh, all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Go ahead. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Wait, wait, wait. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Go back to the picture. Go back to the picture, please. Uh -oh. So black were the Jews. So dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Look what they did to us. They enslaved us. Now go back. Go on back. Read it again. Waite says, as an interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews, especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. These are scholars he's quoting. Go ahead. The Duchess de Ambrantis, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. You see that? The Jew and Negro. The word Negro came from Spain. Mm. It's Spanish. It simply means black. It referred to the Jews. That's how they called us. Negro. The Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. Go ahead. 
So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. That's right, and they were. Because remember, at this time, they were, they were converts. Okay? Give me the next page in the next book, please. Page 212. Read that. Negroes claim to be Jewish is legitimate. The Negroes claim to be Jewish is legitimate. Go ahead. The land of Israel is located in Western Asia and borders on North Africa. All of the native inhabitants of that region were non-white. Mm. When Spain expelled its Jews. When Spain expelled its Jews through slavery and expulsion. In 1492. Many of them went to Africa. Many of those Jews went to Africa. Go ahead. It seems probable that some of them were brought later to America as slaves. Facts. Facts. Go ahead. The spirituals never sing of African rivers. It's always of the Jordan or the Red Sea. They don't sing about African chiefs or kings. It's David or Moses or some other Jewish character from the Bible. Fact. Y'all see that? That's some good stuff. Give me the That's next right. book. Give me that next book. The fate of the Jews, a people torn between Israeli power and Jewish ethics. Now, I usually don't give book covers, but today I, I decided to give it to y'all. Ro <laughs> you just shut up. <laughs> Rober Roberta Strauss Fairley. Go ahead. Give me the next page inside the book. Jews and blacks. Let's go down to the highlighted section. Start it historically, Bishop, or just to highlight it? Okay, uh, got you. Historically. Okay, historically, the race relationship between Jew and black in America has not been one of equality. Jews were traders and masters. Blacks were merchandise and slaves and servants. You see how they did us? You see how they did us? Mm -hmm. They enslaved us. Give me the next page. This was particularly true of the South before the Civil War. Not only were a disproportionate number of Jews slave owners. Some of us white folks, these converts were slave owners. Go slave ahead. traders. Slave traders. And slave auctioneers. Slave auction. Give me the nigga soul to Master Charles. And they had that southern drawl. These were Jewish slave mm -hmm. auctioneers. Go ahead. Damn. But when the line was drawn between the races, they were on the white side. They didn't give a dag on the Jews. They said, we know that these are the real Jews. But we on the white side, because that's mm -hmm. we the same people. I hope y'all see that. Give me the next picture of the slave ships. Get alive. Give me Deuteronomy 28, yes, 68, sir. please. Yes, sir. What happened to the real Jews? What happened to the real black Jews that the Bible speaks of? Well, here we go, right? Yeah. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt means house of bondage. The Lord will bring you into the house of bondage, slavery. Again with ships. What kind of ships? Was it a yacht? No. Was it a canoe? No. It was a cargo slave ship. Y'all see that right there? Sorry. One time the cargo was wine and things of that nature. But now the cargo, as you see in the third picture right there, our bodies, men and women, we became the cargo. We don't get a liar? Yes, sir. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Give me the next picture. IT, go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and slave bond women. Slave men and slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you from the curses God put on us for breaking God's commandments. So I wanted these pictures because they show you actual slave ships. Because you got this Negro jailhouse talk that slaves' ships never existed. You lying bunch of Negroes out there. Give me the next picture. Look at this. These are children on slave ships. Give me the next one. More black children, Jews on slave ships. So now, we're going to jump up in time, write this down. We were emancipated. Between 1863 and 1865, uh, uh, Cap, give me, I believe it's Zephaniah 115, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir, that's it. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 15. <clears throat> 
that wait hold on yeah is it Zechariah one fifteen bishop is further a, the affliction yes yes sir right. Zechariah one fifteen Zechariah get Zechariah chapter one verse fifteen yes sir remember I meant you I just said we were emanci emancipated eighteen sixty three some of us didn't find that until eighteen sixty five but what happened go ahead Zechariah chapter one verse fifteen and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease for I was about for I but I was but a little displeased. And they help forward the affliction. See that? And they help forward the affliction. Because once we were emancipated, that should have been it. But the heathen said, nah, we got to do more to these people. They donned their, their hoods, set up Ku Klux Klan, sharecropper laws, agriculture laws, uh, uh, the 13th Amendment bringing us back to slavery again. That's what they did. Read it again. Yes, sir. Zechariah 1.15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. They helped forward the affliction with their Jim Crow laws, the black codes, so forth and so on. Now I'm going to jump up a few years, 1913, write this down, 1913. What happened in 1913? Well, there's a lot of things that happened. I'm skipping over a lot of history, but I'm just getting to some key points about Esau Edom. Give me the book. Give me the book. Mm -hmm. Read that, get a line. Who is Esau Edom by Charles A. Wiseman? This is so-called Jewish man who did a little research on his history. Hmm. Let's go inside the book. Let's zoom in. Let's read the highlights. There is not one favorable or positive statement in the Bible in relation to Esau Edom. Ha, wait, wait, wait. There's not one favorable. Can somebody tell a Christian... There's not one favorable or positive statement in the Bible in relation to Esau, Edom. You know what that means? John 3.16, he realized don't apply to Esau, Edom at all. In fact, it don't apply to no other nation but the Israelites. That's right. Next highlighted section. If God hated you and your ancestors, how would you react? What would you do? By natural reaction, you would be against God and his people. See that? Mm, go ahead. And try to prevent them from finding out you are Esau. So wait a minute. If God hated you and your ancestors, now there's a Christian right now saying, God don't hate nobody. Give me give a cap. Yes, sir. Romans 9, 13. New Testament. Yes, sir. Book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You know what they're thinking right now? That's only Esau. That don't apply to all Caucasians. Hmm. Malachi 1, yes, please. Sir. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 4. Malachi, chapter 1, excuse me, and verse 4. Whereas Edom, we well, started verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. That was during the dark ages. Go ahead. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. They rebuilt as the Khazars. They came out as the Khazars during the Renaissance period. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. I should say as the Khazars and then during the Renaissance. Go ahead. But I will throw down. Mm -hmm. They shall call them the border of wickedness. They shall call them, meaning Esau, Edom. They shall call them the border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Notice it says the people, not the person. Mm -hmm. The people whom the Lord has indignation against forever. Indignation means righteous anger forever. Let's go back to the book. And let's start again about if God hated you. Yes, sir. God hated you and your ancestors. How would See, that's why it says ancestors, because it ain't just Esau himself, the individual, but his people. Read it again. If God hated you and your ancestors, how would you react and what would you do? By natural reaction, you would be against God. By and natural reaction, you would be against God. And his people. And his people, meaning us. And try to prevent them from finding out you are Esau. And they would do everything they could do. To prevent us from finding out that they were the Edomites, the children of Esau. Go ahead. The one God is against, knowing that if God is against something, so will his followers. Uh-oh. Go ahead. 
Who is, who is it that tries to conceal their identity as Edom, the one hated by God, by claiming to be Israel? By claiming what? To be Israel. So Edom would claim to be Israel. Go ahead. The one loved by God. Mm -hmm. Only one group of people reacts as though God has a hatred for them. That is the Jews. That is the Jews. White folks. Go ahead. Why, would, why do you suppose the Jews form organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Read that again. <laughs> why do you suppose the Jews form organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League to monitor and combat hate and to identify hate groups? Oh, you're a hate group. You're a hate group. You're a hate. That's what they do. But they're the true haters. Go ahead. Would not Esau want to do this? Why is it that it is predominantly Jews who promote the anti-hate laws and other hate crime le legislation? If you were Esau Edom, would you not do the same? Mm. An Edomite would also want to infiltrate churches. So an Edomite would also want to infiltrate churches. What would they do in the church? Come on, next page. Zoom in and seminaries mm. to get God's people to believe that there is no God of hate. God don't hate nobody. He's all about love. That campaign makes it easy for them to say, oh, you Romans 9, you're a hater. You're a racist. That's what they do. Go ahead. And seminaries to get God's people to believe that there is no God of hate, only a God of love and mercy. Mm. The Jews have done just that in Christendom. The Jews have done just that in Christendom. Now, how did the ADL start? That's, that's my question. How did the ADL start? Give me the next picture. Now, y'all may know this, but those of you at home, here's how the Anti-Defamation anti League got started. There was a, a so-called Jewish man named Leo Frank. He was the superintendent of a factory. We had a, a lot of workers. He had a couple of black people, these two that you see here, Jim Conley, he was a janitor of the factory, and you had Newt Lee, night watchman of the factory. Well, something happened, something happened. A young white girl named Mary Fagan was raped, was raped, horribly raped and murdered. Jim Conley in the center says, hey, it was Leo Frank that did it. All the workers testified against Leo Frank. Guess who Leo Frank said it was? Jim Conley. He said, no, it was Jim Conley. It wasn't me, it was Jim Conley. Give me the next page. Go ahead, the, read that. The Tennessean, and an, an innocent man was lynched. So, Jim Conley, I mean, yeah, this is Jim Conley, this is the brother who revealed what happened. Okay, go back to the picture. Go back to the other ones. Yeah, Jim Conley right there. Y'all see Mary Fagan on the far left. She was raped and murdered by Leo Frank, the so-called Jewish man right there. When it went to court, a, at least 25 Edomites came out and testified against Leo Frank. Women who worked at the factory and said no. Everyone felt uneasy around Leo Frank because he had a touchy-feely uh, uh, habits. He was a pervert. Leo Frank blamed a Negro. Blame a nigga. Blame a nigga. But in court, it didn't work. White folks lynched Leo Frank. And that's how the ADL was created. Give me the next picture. That's Jim Conley, the brother. Give me the next one. That's Leo Frank. Leo Frank, inside story of Georgia's greatest murder mystery. Ain't no mystery! It was revealed Leo Frank was the culprit, but he wanted to blame a Negro. That's what they do. Give me the next picture. Look at him, little, hurt, little pervert itself. Look at him! Look at him! He's a pervert, through and through! Nasty little scavenger self. Look at Pee Wee Herman. You're right, Pee Wee Herman. Look just like him. Give me the next picture. And that's Mary Fagan right there. And these people all testified against Leo Frank. So that's how the ADL was formed. 
They were like, never again. No so-called Jewish man will ever be convicted. That's, what, that's how they formed that garbage. Uh, hey, type in Jonathan Greenblatt, ADL. And if, if, if you can find the news when he was on The Breakfast Club talking about how the ADL was formed, because he talked about it, but he never revealed on The Breakfast Club that they blamed the black man. They didn't reveal that part. Kept that part secret. They said, these dumb niggas ain't going to do no research, that we blame them for everything. Put up Jonathan Greenblatt, head of president of the ADL. Now we offered to sit down with Jonathan Green, blah, but he didn't respond. I wonder why. I wonder why. Can you put up Jonathan Green? It can't be that hard to find a picture of him. Can't be that hard. There he goes. There, there you go. Enter the devil. Jonathan Greenblatt. So as you see, that's him there on the breakfast club, and he talked about how the ADL was founded but he never revealed they blamed a black man, Jim Conley, for the murder of Mary Fagan. He never revealed that part. And Charlemagne just sat there like a lump on a log, quiet as a church mouse. Well, let's jump up in history. Let's jump up. Let's jump up to 1944. Give me Revelation 13, Captain. Yes, sir. Verse 1 and 2. <laughs> I Revel want y'all all to pay close attention to this. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. I don't want one. that yet. No, nope, take it off. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up out of the sea. Uh, now that's what I want is a beast rising up from the sea. Read. Having seven heads and Having ten horns. Having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And upon the horns, ten crowns. And upon the horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. Do y'all have the uh, picture the art department had done? With the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. It had their names listed. Do y'all have it? Hello, you don't have it. Well, all righty then. All right. So, write this down. This is for people at home. The seven heads. You got Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Britain. Was that seven? That was seven? Okay. Who got the list of the, uh, ten, the ten horns? Who wrote it down for me? Who wrote it down? Go ahead, read it out loud. All right, you got the ten horns. Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands. Oh, they found it. They, they found, found it. it. Okay, good. <sighs> All right, you want me to read it, Bishop? Yeah, read it off the screen. Please. All right, the seven heads. Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain. Eighth head, America. Right, the ten eighth head later on was America. Yes, sir. The ten horns is who? Ten horns is Belgium. Luxembourg, Luxembourg, excuse me, Netherlands, Germany, United Kingdom, Italy, Greece, France, Denmark, Ireland. Right, those were the beginning ones. Let's go back to Revelation 13, and we're in verse 2. Pay close attention to this. Pay close attention. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. When it says like a leopard, it goes back to Daniel 7. The empire that had this some animal symbol of a leopard were the Greeks. So it's saying that these last empires would have traits of the Greeks. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Now when you go back to Daniel 7, the empire that had the animal symbol of a bear was Persia. So this last Greek empire, I mean not Greek empire, this last empire with seven heads, and ten horns would have attributes of ancient Persia. They would not be Persians, but they would, they would have attributes similar to Persia. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. When you go back to Daniel 7, this, the empire that had the animal symbol of a lion was Babylonians. Those were Hamites. 
So it's saying that these last empire, empires would have the traits of ancient Babylon. They would not be Babylonians by blood, but they would have characteristics and traits of Babylon. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power. Now that's what I wanted to get to right there. The dragon gave him his power. Write this down. The dragon there is the spiritual demon Satan. How do we know? Give me 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 9. Here's the precept. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Even him, talking about Esau, Edom, whose comings is after the working of Satan. Go ahead. With all power. With and, all power. And signs. And signs. And lying wonders. And lying wonders. I'm going to give you an example. Give me Isaiah 54, verse 16. Listen good, listen good, listen good. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Behold, I have created the smith. Who have what? Who I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Who have bloweth the coals in the fire. Write this down. The smith at one time, well, write this down. The smith is the scientist today. Back in ancient time, a smith made weapons. He made swords. He made arrows. He made javelins. He made armor. He made bracers. Things of that nature. He made weapons. Knives. Okay? Everybody understand that, right? Yes, sir. Read it again. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. What kind of instrument is God talking about? Go ahead. And I have created the waster to destroy. And I have created the waster to destroy. That's what we're focusing on now. The waster. The wa what kind of weapon can waste? Give me the precept. I'm going to show you what kind of weapon this is. Zechariah 14, I want. Yes, sir. Fourteen, thirteen, maybe. I ain't. Yes, I didn't write it down. Yes, sir. I think it's. I think it's twelve. Read this. twelve. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Zechariah chapter fourteen, verse twelve. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Now this is going into Gog and Magog, but what I want y'all to see. I didn't bring that out yet, right? But what I want y'all to see is what this fire does. Read. And this shall be the plague wherewith the, the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So what this waster would do would be similar to what this fire would do. Read that part again. Yes, sir. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their flesh would consume away while they're standing upon their feet. Go ahead. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Their eyes will consume away in their holes, the eye sockets. Go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And their tongue will consume away out of their mouth. Go back to Isaiah 54. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster. To destroy. Yeah, put that on the screen. 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 Give me the other images, too. I liked all them images. A delay reaction, but I'll take it. Put it on the screen. Yeah. This is it. While they stand up. Read it. Get a lie. Read it so they can see. Yes, sir. Zachariah 14 and 12. Do y'all got a video? Do y'all got a video or no? No video? Click video right there. Go down. Let me see. Nope, 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 nope. Right, wait. Is that it? No, it's too long. Go down. Right. Right. Can you click the? It says two seconds. That might be too short. Or that's just a GIF? Or does a GIF play on the on on this? Or no? That's it. Can we play that? Will it be okay? Just jump to the part. I don't want all that sad stuff. 
Right, right once you get to the gate, you're right there. Play that. From right there, right. I don't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. Uh, that's it. This is an example of the waster. That's it, okay, Cat. Read it again. Zechariah yes, 14, sir. 12. You got to read that again. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Mm, so now. Back to Isaiah 54, 16. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Because here's the question, go ahead. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. So the question is, who is the smith by name that God created that, and, and that God allowed Satan to give power to? Give me the next video. <clears throat> give me the next video. It's... Um, It, wait, let me make sure cause so y'all don't mess me up. It's called, the video I want, let me turn the volume down, How the Atomic Bomb. How the Atomic, is that the video y'all got? Okay, good, 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 good. Write this down. The Smith, his name was Oppenheimer. 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 I know y'all saying, well, how do you spell that? I'm black. O-P-P-E-N-H-E-I-M-E-R. I think, I think. I'm taking a wild guess. Oppenheimer. Now, pay, listen good, uh, IT. I want you all to write this down. We're going to play from zero to one minute, 35 seconds. Write that down. Then we're going to jump, because this, this is about a 10-minute video. We're not watching 10 minutes. The next section I want is 306-minute mark to 310 minute mark. You got that, Cap? Azariah, you got that? Now, we, then after that, I want five 18-minute mark to 703-minute mark. So I need y'all back there to pay close attention to the time. Let me know when y'all ready. We ready? Let us begin. As Julius Robert Oppenheimer witnessed the successful detonation of the world's first nuclear weapon, he was haunted by its implications. No, I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. That's him right Oppenheimer here. was a man of many talents. He spoke eight languages, wrote poetry, Yet he will forever be remembered as the father of the atomic bomb. The man who gave people the power to destroy themselves was haunted by his own creation. So he gave pause, he gave them when the people, power of the ato uh, atomic bomb. Remember what we read in Revelation 13 2, and Satan, the dragon, gave them their power. We read in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, whose comings is after the workings of Satan. With all power, with all signs and lying wonders. Play on. Oppenheimer, what was immediately obvious to them what is was this? his intellect. Oh. A former colleague once said, the man was unbelievable. He always gave you the right answer before you formulated the question. Knowledge came easy to Oppenheimer. He learned Dutch in six weeks, just so he could give a lecture while on a visit to the Netherlands. He was born in New York on oh, April 22nd, 1920. Oh, in case y'all didn't know, Oppenheimer was a Jewish German. This is, this is teeming. Go ahead. 
We're going to where? We're going to 135. Son of German Jewish immigrants. Oh, they just said it. Go back, go back. Go go back a little second. Go ahead. Sure, while on a visit to the Netherlands. He was born in New York on April 22, 1904, the older son of German Jewish immigrants. His father, Julius, was a textile importer who became very wealthy. His mother was a painter whose family had been in New York for generations. He was raised in Manhattan on the Upper West Side in an apartment adorned with paintings by famous artists, including Van Gogh. After attending an elite private school in New York City, he went on to Harvard in 1922, intending to become a chemist, but leaving with an appetite for physics. Okay, from there, you know, 306 mark to 310. Oppenheimer agreed with Einstein that German scientists could make a nuclear weapon. And when they Hello. They did. Hitler was prepared to use it. America watched fearfully. Oh, oh, in case in the Germans had the first, they created first the bal conventional ballistic missile. They created that first. It was the Germans. That's, write this down. The Germans are teaming. That's teaming. T-E-M-A-N that we read about in Genesis 36. That's them. Oppenheimer was one of them. That, his family converted to being Jewish. All right, get a, I mean, uh, Captain uh, Azariah. Highly fissionable. However, it's not a naturally occurring element and had to be manufactured. Reactors were built in southeastern Washington state to produce the plutonium. And then, on July 16, 1945, scientists detonated a plutonium bomb over the small town of Alamogordo, New Mexico. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Never before had humanity possessed a weapon that posed a threat to human civilization. The test's success meant an atomic bomb was ready to be used by the U.S. military. The following month, the U.S. military dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. On August 6, 1945, the most powerful weapon in the world was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. 140,000 people were killed, many vaporized. Thousands more would die in pain in the months and years that followed from radiation poisoning. Three days later, another bomb fell on Nagasaki, killing 74,000 people with equally devastating effects. Japanese Emperor Hirohito decried the devastating power of a new and most cruel bomb. Japan surrendered six days later, abruptly ending World War II. Oppenheimer initially expressed guilt over his creation. He said the weapon had dramatized so mercilessly Are you the paying inhumanity attention to the time? and evil of war. He continued, in some sort of crude sense, which no vulgarity, no humor, no overstatements can quite extinguish. All right, 518. 518, pay close attention. Come on known sin, and this is a knowledge which they cannot lose. Okay, we're going to 518 to 703, and it's not on, it's not on the screen. Highly fissionable. However, it's not a naturally occurring element and had to be manufactured. Reactors were built in southeastern Washington state to produce the plutonium. And then, on July 16, 1945, scientists detonated a plutonium bomb over the small town of Alamogordo, New Mexico. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Never before had humanity possessed a weapon that posed a threat to human civilization. The test's success meant an atomic bomb was ready to be used by the U.S. military. The following month, the U.S. military dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. On August 6, 1945, the most powerful weapon in the world 
was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. 140,000 people were killed, many vaporized. Thousands more would die in pain in the months and years that followed from radiation poisoning. Three days later, another bomb fell on Nagasaki, killing 74,000 people with equally devastating effects. Japanese Emperor Hirohito decried the devastating power of a new and most cruel bomb. Japan surrendered six days later, abruptly ending World War II. Oppenheimer initially expressed guilt over his creation. He said the weapon had dramatized so mercilessly the inhumanity and evil of war. He continued, in some sort of crude sense, which no vulgarity, no humor, no overstatements can quite extinguish. Hey, get a lot. You know what I want? Give me Genesis about the blessing that Isaac gave them. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning Esau would live everywhere, the best places on earth. Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. Uh-huh. They will cover the lands. Go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live. That's what I wanted right there. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Meaning Esau was blessed with the art of war, the creation of weaponry and things of that nature. Read that again. And by thy sword shalt thou live mm -hmm. and shalt serve thy brother. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now you can read about them breaking their yoke from under Solomon's reign on the sec in 2 Kings 8, verse 20. So now, watch this. Give me the next video, the, Oppenheim, the new movie that's coming out. The new movie. And for time's sake, start at, no, just start from the beginning. Start, just play it. This is a trailer. Put it up. Listen. This is a national emergency. Detonator charge. We're in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means. If the Nazis have a bomb. They have a 12 month head start. 18. How could you possibly know that? We've got one hope. All America's industrial might and scientific innovation connected here. A secret laboratory. Keep everyone there until it's done. Let's go recruit some scientists. Build a town, build it fast. If we don't let scientists bring their families, we'll never get the best. Why would we go to the middle of nowhere for who knows how long? Why? Why? How about because this is the most important thing to ever happen in the history of the world? You're the great improviser, but this... you can't do in your head. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. This is a matter of life and death. I can perform this miracle. Stop! Go back a few seconds. Right there. Listen good to what he calls it. It's a matter of life and death. I can perform this miracle. Stop! Go back again. Y'all might have missed it. Dang. Dang. I can perform this miracle. He said I can perform this what? Miracle. miracle. Give me Revelation 13, please. 
Revelation 13, and we're going to start at verse 13, I think. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders. And he, does, he is the white man. Amalek, teeming. Go ahead. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven. The, so the, that he maketh fire come down from heaven. On the earth in the sight of men. In, in the sight of the nations. Go ahead. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. By the means of those miracles. Those what? Those miracles. 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 He said, I can perform this miracle. The Bible's a true book. I don't know what y'all playing with. Y'all keep on playing with this thing. Read that again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. The sight of the beast was his, other, his allies. Okay, go ahead. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, what does that mean, make an image to the beast? Give me that next, the, uh, uh, the head of Christ. The head of Christ should be a link. The head of Christ, right there. That's it. Raise it up. Let's read that. The head of Christ, also called the Solomon Head, is a 1940 portrait painting of Jesus of Nazareth by American artist Warner Salmon. Now, let's jump down for time. So raise it up. This is the head of Christ here. Raise it up. Uh, let's say Origins. I forgot where it was. but uh, Yeah, go ahead. Read there. Origins. The head of Christ originated as a charcoal sketch entitled The Son of Man, done in 1924. And sold to be the cover of the Covenant Companion. The so jump to 1940, in 1940, because that's when World War II was. Yes, right. sir. In 1940, he was asked to reproduce that painting by the students of North Park Theological Seminary. Now raise it up. Uh, raise it up some more. I want it, yeah. Okay, right here. The Baptist Book. The Baptist Bookstore initially popularized the painting, distributing various size lithographic images for sale throughout the southern United States. The Salvation Army of the YMCA, as members of the USO, handed out pocket-sized versions of the painting to American servicemen heading overseas during World War II. So during World War II, this image, that image became famous. This is the image that the Bible is talking about. Okay, raise it up. Let me see if there was anything else. Oh, that was it? Okay, let's go back to the scripture. Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. And so what else happened during this time? Read. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Because that image comes from Rome. Rome had the wound by a sword, meaning it fell and it was resurrected during the Renaissance. That image comes from Rome. Okay, okay. So now, from there, from there, give me, no, write this down. 1945 to 1959. We are going to talk about, write this down, Operation paperclip, wherein the United States recruited 1,600 German scientists, engineers, technicians who were former Nazis from Germany. Give me Psalm 64 and verse 2. Yes. Bishop, I thought that I was a receipt connoisseur, Bishop. You dropping all the receipts right now. If, if you still confused as to who the nation is whom the Most High has had indignation for forever, you sleep. Go drink some milk. Get you some warm milk. Go lay your ass back in the bed. This right here is Bible prophecy unfolding. No other nation. You see that the, the Edomite, uh, I forget his name, Bishop. Who on earth would think 
to create a missile or a bomb. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. That could kill everybody. He go test it. It's a, it's a zero point. It's close to zero chance that it'll kill everybody on earth, but we're going to try it anyway. Edom is the only one. By thy sword shalt thou live. This nation is the only nation on earth that thinks like this. Bishop, they say you, um, you can tell the mass murderers and the serial killers from young. They, they kill little animals in their neighborhood and stuff like that. Edom is the only nation that enjoys killing animals his whole life, Bishop. This is how he moves. By his sword, he thinks through his might, he can be successful. Get that, Psalm 64, verse 2. Psalm chapter 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. The reason I went here is to show you that Esau Edom has secret counsels. And one of the secret counsels is called Operation Paper Clip. I'm going to give you another scripture, Isaiah 29 and 15. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? So again, more secret counsels. Give me Isaiah 47 and 10. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Why none seeth me? Because they did everything in secret, covert uh, uh, actions. Go ahead. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. They created the atom bomb. They created many, all these great adventures y'all see out here. The vast majority of them I see it like that. Go ahead. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside so thee. So because of those miracles that they created, they said, I am. I am God. Go ahead. Verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Mm. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. God got a trick bag for them. Go ahead. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. That which thou shalt not know. Read. Stand now with thine enchantments. Stand now with your enchantments. Go ahead. And with the multitude of thy sorceries. Mm -hmm. Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. Go ahead. If so be thou shalt be able to profit. If so be thou mayest prevail. So now, so now, I'm going to show you a couple of videos about Operation Paperclip. Give me that first one. How long is that? How long is that? Okay, go ahead. Play that. In 1945, a Polish lab technician discovered pieces of paper floating in a toilet at Bonn University. Little did he know, the discovery would trigger one of the most controversial intelligence initiatives in United States history. When around 1,600 Nazi scientists were recruited to the U.S. Those pieces of paper were fragments of the Ossenberg List, a roll call of Nazi Germany's top scientists rocketeers, and engineers. Nazi leaders aimed to identify and reassign them from the battle to the laboratory in the desperate hope of turning the tide of the war. But when the war in Europe ended and Nazi Germany was defeated, news of the Ossenberg List made it into the hands of U.S. intelligence, where it was seen as an opportunity for the U.S. government to recruit the scientists for themselves. At the end of the war, and with the approval of President Harry S. Truman, Operation Paperclip commenced in 1945. It was so secret, even the Justice Department's Nazi hunters, whose job it was to track down Nazis for criminal prosecution, didn't know of its existence. Between 1945 and 1959, around 1,600 Nazi scientists were recruited as part of the operation. Many had previously served as high-ranking Nazi officials, including infamous aerospace engineer Werner von Braun, creator of the Third Reich's deadly V-2 rockets, weapons used to bomb London, England during the war. Due to Operation Paperclip, von Braun became director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and the chief architect of the Apollo moon landing launch vehicle. With a successful firing of the Saturn, a gigantic stride has been taken in the exploration of space. Specialists in chemistry, physics, and electronic engineering were also hired. The roughly 1,600 scientists 
and their $10 billion in technical and intellectual secrets that included patents and industrial processes were considered intellectual reparations and a part of Germany's war reparations. Details of the covert operation finally came to light in 1958 when Time magazine ran a story on Werner von Braun. Yet despite the publicity, no paperclip recruits were ever charged or held accountable for their war crimes. And many went on to live happy, successful lives as US citizens. What can happen when ethical lines are challenged or crossed by the government? You see the hypocrisy of, of, of Amalek, hip, hypocrites, all of them. Hey, and a lot, they all changed their names too. They all changed their names. Hey, give me the next clip. It's a short. Yes. Is the only good Nazi a dead Nazi? That was the sentiment during World War II, but after the war, the American government was willing to make some exceptions. Approved in a secret directive by President Truman, Operation Paperclip was a secret US intelligence program that recruited over 1,600 scientists, engineers, and technicians from Germany between 1945 and 1959. Many of these people were not only former Nazis, but in some cases, they were even former leaders in the Nazi party. Oh, with Nazi Germany defeated in World War II when the Red Menace seen as the new threat to American democracy, the government was willing to overlook the former affiliation of these individuals if it meant gaining an advantage in the Cold War and winning the space race. One of these scientists was Werner von Braun, chief architect of the Saturn V launch vehicle used in all of the Apollo missions to the moon. Give me the next one. Imagine a top to NASA. Play it again, play it again, play it again, play it again. Go back, go back, go back. Pay attention. Imagine a top secret operation that involved the recruitment of Nazi scientists and engineers by the United States government after World War II. Sounds like a plot from a spy movie, right? But this is not fiction. This is Operation Paperclip. After the end of World War II, the United States government was in a race against the Soviet Union to develop advanced technology. The U.S. government secretly recruited over 1,600 Nazi scientists and engineers to work for the U.S. military and intelligence agencies. Among them were Werner von Braun, who had developed the V-2 rocket for the Nazis, and Arthur Rudolph, who had overseen the production of the V-2 rocket at the Middlework factory, where thousands of concentration camp prisoners had died. The operation was highly classified, and the U.S. government went to great lengths to keep it a secret. The scientists and engineers were given new identities, and their Nazi pasts were erased. Some of the scientists and engineers had been involved in war crimes, and there were concerns about their loyalty to the U.S. There were also concerns about the ethical implications of recruiting former Nazi. Despite these concerns, Operation Paperclip continued for several years, and the Nazi scientists and engineers made significant contributions to U.S. technology and science. You can't make this stuff up. What you got for me, Deke? What you got? Yeah, let me get the article I sent you, Captain Azarai. All right, so after um, Oppenheimer and his people set off that plutonium bomb, there was a whole bunch of reports of chariots, so-called UFOs, right? Go down, go down, I wanna show y'all something. Go down, keep going, go slow, go slow, hold it, go back up. Go down, go down, go down, right there. Start reading from where it says, it is difficult. It is difficult to predict what the attitude of international law will be with regard to the occupation by, by celestial So this is, this is a unclassified, at one time it was classified, then it became unclassified way later, decades later. This is a letter from Oppenheimer to Truman, okay, about so-called UFOs. Go ahead. By the, uh, to the occupation by celestial peoples of certain locations on our planet. But the only thing that can be foreseen is that there will be a profound change in traditional concepts. So he said there will be a profound change in traditional concepts when the invasion happens. Go ahead. We cannot exclude the possibility that a race of extraterrestrial people more advanced technologically and economically may take upon itself the right to occupy another cel uh, celestial Body. That occupation that it's talking about is Christ coming here to invade this planet. Go ahead, come on. How then would this occupation come about? Go down, keep reading. The at let's blow it up a little bit. The no, the other way, brother. The that right there. Read number one. Come on. The idea of exploitation by one celestial state would be rejected. Go ahead. They may think it would 
be advisable to grant it to all others capable of reaching another celestial body. But this would be to maintain a situation of privilege for these states. Read number two. Read a little faster. The, the division of a celestial body into zones and the distribution of, the, of them among So basically what they're doing, they're listing different ways that they would be able to so-called co-inhabit this planet Earth with the so-called UFOs. I'm going to show you something because a lot of these apologists, Bishop, they like to call us UFO nuts and so forth. Read verse, uh, I'm not verse, read number three. Go ahead. And then we're going to go up. Read three. It, indivisible, O oh, sovereignty, co -sovereignty. co sovereignty. Let me read it. Let me read it, Lemuel. Yes, indivisible co sovereignty, which will there be no co sovereignty because this whole planet Earth is going to be under Christ and the Israelites. Giving each celestial state the right to make whatever use is most convenient to its interests. Independently of the others, this would create a situation of anarchy as the strongest one would win out in the end. Who's the strongest ones, brothers? Christ, absolutely. Go up now for the sake of time. Nope, the other way. Go back up. I just want to get to Keep going. I want to show y'all something. What this white devil, these Edomites, know that the whole world doesn't know because our people are still asleep. Go up. Go slow. Go down to the fourth paragraph. Right there. At any rate, international law should make place for a new law on a different basis. And it might be called... Law among planetary peoples following the guidelines found in the Pentateuch. Now, put that in Google for those who don't know. So what is the white man talking about here? He's telling you that when the invasion happens, the whole planet Earth is going to be under the Pentateuch. Let's type that in for those who don't know, who don't, for those who are watching online. What is the Pentateuch? If, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Pentateuch. The Pentateuch includes the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. So who wrote that letter? Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. So to, to all these apologists, oh, they're UFO nuts, they're crazy. We ain't crazy, you crazy. Go all the way down. Let's see who wrote this letter. Go down, go down. Keep going. Let's see who wrote this. Rhoda, go back up. Go back up. Right there, go back up, right there. Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer. Speaking good Deutsch. That's some good stuff. That's some excellent stuff. So that was what we discussed was 1945. Something occurred after World War II. 1948. Give me that uh, newspaper article. Newspaper, 1948, right there, yep. Read that, who's reading? Captain Lemuel. Go ahead. Its name is Israel. U.S. recognizes Jewish state. So Israel became a state. This is when it got all of the uh, Khazars, Idumeans, from Poland, Russia, Germany, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, to come to this land to make a new state. Give me the next article. Read that top. The New York Times. Zionists proclaim new state of Israel. Truman recognizes it and hopes for peace. Tel Aviv is bombed. Egypt orders invasion. Okay, give me the next picture with the American flag. Yep, America helped set up uh, this new modern Israel with the help of the League of Nations. That's what the, U the United Nations was called at that time, the League of Nations. So America was instrumental in establishing that new state. Give me Daniel 11 and verse 14. Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. And in those times there shall many stand up Against the king of the south. The king of the south is Egypt, like we just read earlier a few minutes ago. There was a war with Egypt. Go ahead. Also the robbers of thy people. The robbers of thy people is Amalek. The robbers of thy people are these Edomite converts. Read that part again. Also. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. What did they rob? They robbed our land. Because now they're taking the land again. 
They robbed our land and our identity. Read that again also. Also, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. Exalt themselves as the Jews. To establish the vision. To establish the vision that they are the Jews. Not only that did they establish themselves as Jewish people. They, not only that they took the land. Not only that they created a new form of Hebrew. That Yiddish form of Hebrew. Go ahead. But they shall fall. The prophecy says, but they shall fall. So I want y'all to look at this verse. When it talks about the robbers of thy people, that extends from the time of the Herodians, from Antipater, that we already discussed, to the Khazars, to 1948. It covers all of that. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Uh, give me Ezekiel 35, and let's start at verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 1. I want you all to pay close attention. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Set thy face against Mount who? Seir. Uh, read Genesis 36 and 8 again, please. So we know, I know some of them aren't at home. They already forgot who Mount Seir is. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. See that? So now when we go back to Ezekiel 35, verse 2 again. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. So we prophesying against the Edomites. Go ahead. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. God is against thee. Go ahead. And I will stretch out mine hand against thee. And I will make thee most desolate. God said, I will make thee most desolate. Come on. I will lay thy cities waste. Ah, see that? I will lay thy cities waste. And thou shalt be desolate. And thou shalt be desolate. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Go ahead. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. Hey, remember during the time of Babylon, we discussed it, what the Edomites did. They helped Babylon overthrow us. Ezekiel was in the Babylonian captivity. He's already prophesying these people helped kill us. They took our land. Not only that, remember, it happened several times in the future. Read that again, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. In the time that their iniquity had an end, what happened? What happened? Remember, I discussed earlier when we were emancipated. That wasn't it. That, they wasn't finished with us. They said, no, 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 let's don our hoods. Let's set up uh, uh, black codes and Jim Crow laws, and let's kill us some niggas. That's what they did. Go ahead. Verse 6. <laughs> Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. And blood shall pursue thee. See, when you read the Bible, when you're reading prophecy, you can't just stop during the time of Ezekiel. No, it goes on. God's prophecies go on. It don't stop to where the, apologet the apologetics will say, no, you got to just stop and leave it there. No, they don't know the Bible. They don't know the spirituality of the word of God. Go ahead. Sit thou hast not, excuse me, sit thou hast not hated blood. Even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. Mm -hmm. And I will fill his mountains with his slain so men. So his mountains. We know ain't nobody living over there now. So what is it talking about? Remember what we read. Hold the crowd. I know you forgot. Get, go back to Genesis 30, uh, 27 you read about the blessing on Esau. Watch this. Genesis chapter 27. Verse, uh, verse 39, and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Thy dwelling would no longer be Mount Seir. It said it would be the fatness of the earth, the best places on the earth you would live, you and your descendants. Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven. And of the dew of heaven, meaning they'd be everywhere. Go ahead. From above. And by thy sword. Shalt thou live? How would they get to all those marvelous and beautiful places where they would live? 
by the sword. They would kill people, destroy nations. Let's go on back now. Ezekiel 35 and verse, what verse was that? Verse 8. Go ahead, read 8 again. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men. In thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. So you be looking. Christianity had got you looking in Mount Seir. There's nobody over there. Nobody lives there. So God is letting you know. If you know the Bible, you know they would live everywhere. France, Germany, Russia, America, Canada, Australia. All these various places. Read. I will make thee per I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return. Ah, you see, and thy cities shall not return. This is prophecy, God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now pay, pay close attention to verse 10, verse 10. Because thou hast said, these two nations. These two nations, go ahead. And these two countries. And these two countries. Shall be mine. Uh -huh. And we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. So what are the two nations talking about? Judah and Israel. What are the two countries talking about? Israel and America. Those are the two main places they always wanted. Why? Many of you can understand why they wanted Israel. Because we live there. Why America? Because the northern kingdom dwelt here on this side of the earth. So read it again. Because thou hast said, these two nations... And these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess and it. And we will possess it? Whereas the Lord was there. What does it mean, whereas the Lord was there? They took the land of Israel, how? As Jews, Jewish people. They took America as what? Christians. They said, we're the people of God in both areas, and the Lord is with us. Read. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger. And according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred They've against They've always them. been envious against us. They've always had hatred against us. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. When I have judged thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard of all thy blasphemies. And I have heard all thy blasphemies. Go ahead. Which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. Saying what? Saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. The people of God have been taken into slavery. We can now take the lands. That's what they did. Go ahead. Thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Hear what the Lord said? I have heard them. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. God said when the whole earth rejoices, because the Lord going to come back, I'm going to make you desolate. I'm going to destroy you. Go ahead. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, in all I do me. Wait, wait, who's I do me? Put it on the screen. Who's I do me? I know some of y'all forgot already. Read that. I do me a Bible meaning red or Edom. See, that's the Edomites. That's the Edomites. God's talking about. Back to verse 15. One more again. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do me of, even all of it. Some of it? All of it. Even all of it. Go ahead. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And now go to chapter 36 and verse 5, please. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I do me. Wait, wait, put I do me back up on the screen. Put it back. Read that again. I do me a Bible meaning red or eat them. So now let's go back to the script. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I do me a, which have appointed my land into their possession. Not only did they possess the land during the time of Babylon when Ezekiel was living, they did in the future time, during the time of Rome and during the time in 1948 to this day. Read that again. Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, mm -hmm. with despiteful minds to cast it out 
for a prey. What does it mean to cast it out for a prey? They have all their fellow Idumians take part, take a piece of it. They call their fellow Idumians from Poland, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Poland, Germany, Russia, all over. They said, come to Israel. Come get a part of this land as the Jews. That's what they did. Okay, from there, from there. Give me Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Wait a minute. Wait, let me get it. Let me get it. Go ahead. And the great dragon was... And, and the great dragon. And the great dragon, go ahead. Was cast out. Was cast out. That old serpent. That old serpent. Called the devil and Satan. So what did this old serpent called the devil and Satan do? Which deceiveth the whole world. Uh huh. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I want to know who this damn devil is. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Go to Revelation 2 9. I'm curious. Who is this dragon? Who is this devil? Revelation 2 9. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Put some pictures on the screen for me. I know thy works. So Christ says I, to the real Jews, I know thy works. And tribulation. And I know all the hell you done caught. Go ahead. And poverty. And I know as a whole you are impoverished. But thou art rich. But thou art rich. You are the Jews of God. You are the Israelites. All the promises in the Bible pertain to you. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. And I know the blasphemy of them. Which say they are Jews and are not. And what? And are not. Well, who are they? But are the synagogue of Satan. But you know what Christians will do? They'll say no. No, hey, give me the picture about Antipater. Give me up the, the file of Antipater in case you want to be stupid. Go back to the, yeah, right there, the, the genealogy. These are all converts. All these people plus 15 more children, like it says at the bottom. Herod the Great had five other wives and 15 children and all. All these people lived during the time when John wrote this thing right here. Yeah. So read it again, verse 9, please. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are wait, Jews. Wait, wait, put it back on the screen. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. That's these people here. That's them. Go ahead. And are not. And are not. Who are they? But are the synagogue of Satan. Of Satan. The synagogue of Satan. Now give me the new pictures. Give me their current visuals, how they look today. Yeah, that's right. Put it up on the screen. This is them. Put it on the screen. Read on. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Mm -hmm. Behold, the devil. Now, what's, now he went from calling him the synagogue of Satan to the devil. Go ahead. The devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Mm -hmm. Be thou faithful unto death. Because they put us to death at that time. Go ahead. And I will give thee a crown of life. Now, watch this. Go back to Revelation 12. Now, verse 9 again. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So now put the red dragon up again. Put the great, the, yeah, put that up. So not only were these the seven heads of Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, and America, and their ten horns. Read that again. And the great dragon was cast out, uh -huh. that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That includes their other, the rest of their people called the devil and Satan. They call themselves what? Jews and are not. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. What did they do? Deceiveth the whole world. This race, this people, the Bible foretells us, has deceived the whole world. Guess what that includes? CNN, BBC, NBC, ABC, all of them. They've deceived the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Jump down to verse 15. Watch, what, watch what's going to happen. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now this is a, a metaphor. The serpent 
is the same serpent in verse 9. It just jumps back in time, which is now our time. It says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. What's their mouth? Their media. Their media, thank you. Their media, which is run by Amalek, so-called Jewish people. They run Sony, Paramount, Fox, Comcast, Walt Disney, uh, TMZ, CW, CNN, HBO, all of these. Vice, right, Vice News, thank you very much. They control all of that. That's the mouth of the serpent. Read that again, verse 15, please. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. The water coming out of his mouth out of the media is lies. Lie. Every, you ever notice every year they got a new movie about World War II? We are the Jews. Where would you feel sorry for us? Every year. Go ahead. After the woman. Uh -huh. the, where the woman? Where the bride of Christ? Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. They want us to be carried away of their lies. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. The earth that's going to help Israel is the prophets reading the Bible. The earth that helps the woman is the prophets reading the Bible. Go ahead. And the, earth op and the earth opened her mouth. And the earth, the prophets are opening what? The Bible. We are opening the Bible. Go ahead. And swallowed up the flood. Which and swallowed up the lies. Swallow up every lie. Go ahead. Which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Uh-huh. And the dragon was wrong. So now we ain't get to verse 17 yet. We still in verse 16 today. Right now we in 16. But listen, brothers, soon to come, verse 17 is coming. Don't sleep. Read 17 now. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. Went to make what? Make war. 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 Go ahead. With the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, we ain't got to that point yet. We have not entered that yet. We still in verse 16. But 17 is coming. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 2, please. Wisdom of Solomon 2. We're going to start at verse 10 for time's sake. Wisdom of Solomon. The Lord's being very patient with us to build ourselves up, for us to build you men and women up. Because if the war came today, 9 out of 10 of you go back in the Christian church praising white Jesus. 9 out of 10 of you. Because you're weak, undisciplined, and you really don't believe as yet. Read. Wisdom of Solomon. I don't care how many muscles you got. I'm speaking to you first and foremost. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10. Come on. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. This is what the ungodly says about us. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. We are the un poor unrighteous man. Go ahead. Let us not spare the widow. They don't care about your widow women. Nor, Read. Nor reverence the aged the ancient gray hairs of the age. They don't care how old we are as a people. You older men, you old women, they don't give a damn. Go ahead. Let our strength be the law of justice. This is why they send their sons and daughters to fill the courthouses. They want to make sure they fill the courthouses as lawyers and judges. This is why they do that. Go ahead. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. That's us. We're, the, we're feeble. Go ahead. Therefore... Let us lie and wait for the righteous. See that part right there? Let us lie and wait for the righteous. Come on. Because he is not for our turn. No, we are not for your turn. We see your lies. We see your conspiracies. Go ahead. And he is clean contrary to our doings. We are contrary to your doing. We are contrary to your Talmud, your education. Go ahead. He upbraideth us with our offending the law. And you break all the laws of God. You don't abide by it. We see that. We testify against you. Go ahead. And objected to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. Because your education comes from the Talmud. Go ahead. He professes to have the knowledge of God. Yes, we do have the knowledge of God. Go ahead. And he calleth himself the child of the and Lord. And we are the child of the Lord. Come on. He was made to reprove our thoughts. We were made to reprove their thoughts. Go ahead. He is grievous unto us even to behold. They can't stand the way we look. This is why they changed the image of the prophets and all that to, the, to fit their images, to make images more pleasing to them. Go ahead. For his life is not like other men's. Mm -hmm. His ways are of another fashion. Come on. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. You are counterfeits. You are fakes. You are frauds. Like it says in Revelation 2, in case you forgot, go back to Revelation 2, 9 and 10, please, about being counterfeits. Revelation chapter 2, 
Verse 9. And I, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. They are not the Jews. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. But they're the synagogue of Satan. Go back now to Wisdom of Solomon 2.16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Because the Bible says you're counterfeits. We know the many times that you have converted to becoming Jewish. We know the times. That's the 817, all right? When was John Hycranus? After that, during the time of Caesarea. We know. Uh, 1948, we know. Go ahead. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. Our end shall be blessed, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And maketh his boast that God is his father. And yes, we do boast that God is our father and not yours. Go ahead. Let us see if his words be true. Watch this. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. See, see, see. Now, that, now we're getting into verse 16 to 17 that we read in Revelation 12. Go ahead. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Y'all see that? Watch this. Let us examine him with despiteful, despitefulness and torture. This is verse 17 that we read in Revelation 12. Read that again. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, mm -hmm. that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Come on. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. See that? This is the war. This is the hands-on war. No longer words. They ain't going to be talking to us no longer. No more. They're going to lay hands on men and women. I hope y'all understand what you're in for, what you signed up for. Go ahead. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. Mm -hmm. Such things they did imagine and were deceived. For their own wickedness hath blinded their them. Their own wickedness shall have blinded them. Go ahead. As for the mysteries of God. As for the mysteries of God. They knew them not. Amalek, you so-called Jewish people, you don't know the mysteries of God. Go ahead. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness. You don't hope for the wages of righteousness. That's why you don't do righteousness in the earth. Go ahead. Nor discern the reward for blameless souls. You don't discern a reward for blameless souls. We are the blameless souls, okay? From there, from there, I'm going to give you a story now. I'm going to give you a story. This is how I know that many of us, some of you men and women are not ready for what's about to happen. There's a sister in South Carolina, and I lie not. She fell on hard times with her rent. She didn't tell nobody. Guess what she did? This is last week, by the way. Week, was it week before last? Last week. She decided to marry a pork chop eating, white Jesus worshiping preacher for a dollar. For a, do for a dollar. Now they married, he telling her she can only worship white Jesus. And she writing us, what should I do, sister? Shut the hell up. Don't, don't write us. You, if you will betray the son of God for a dollar, what will you do to save your life? And that's why I said the physical war of them laying hands on us, the Lord's holding it back now for many of us to build our spirits up. Because if it came today... Nine out of ten, everybody listening right now, be right back praising white Jesus, bowing your head, kissing a white man's feet. You ain't ready yet. You ain't ready yet. Give me Matthew 10.33, please. Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. And especially you brothers and sisters that never congregate, that stay at home on the internet, Lord knows you would betray this truth like that. Why don't you congregate? Oh, my job. They'll fire me. Well, if you will do that for your job, what else will you do to save your life? Read that, Matthew 10, 33, please. But whosoever shall deny me before men, whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. You and Christ said, him also will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. This is heavy. Christ said, if you will betray him, if you won't confess him, he won't confess you either. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read that again. But whosoever shall deny me before men. Read 32 and 33 together. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. 
him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm post something to you about those verses. Verse 33 mainly. Because everybody right now, you at home listening, you all say, I, I, I confess the Lord. I confess Christ. What state or condition do you think Christ is making reference to? Read from verse 31. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are, mo ye are of more value than many sparrows. Why do you think he starts off in 31 and says, fear ye not? He's talking about a time of tribulation. He's not talking about like right now you at home in the comfort of your home. You got your pool, your yacht. You flying from here to there. You're doing all of the things. You, you, gotta, you, got, you got everything you want. It ain't talking about. Read 31 again. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Actually, let's start up above it. Let's start at 28. Thank you. Let's start at 28 and read down so we can read the context. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Meaning the lake of fire. Go ahead. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground which without your father. Meaning a sparrow does not die without the father's consent. His father, the father's consent, his say so, God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Christ said, the hairs on your head are numbered. You heard that, Deacon Lapa? The hairs of your head are numbered. Go ahead. Fear ye not, therefore. Now it comes back, fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're important than birds, Christ is saying. Read. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Now we understand the condition. He's talking about under the rest of death. Go ahead. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This is why I says we ain't ready. We ain't ready yet. These classes are meant to build you up. You men, study, apply, apply. Study, pray, apply. You women, study, pray, apply. Because if it happens today, you will be kissing the dirt from the white man's feet. And you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Matthew 16, 24 now. Hey, Bishop. Yes, sir. Also, when we go to, to the Maccabees, it show you how... Those seven sons, they were tortured in front of their mother. Sometimes Esau could even use your kids. They, gon they might torture your kids in front of you to see if, if they're going to break you. Okay? When you read about Peter, Peter's wife was killed with him. You know, Peter smiled and he told his wife, he said, listen, remember the Lord. Okay? It's the same way you, you brothers and sisters, we got to build ourselves up to. And we got to teach our kids that too. Those seven, son, those seven sons that died, they, their mother taught them, listen, you leave this world, you're going to be with your Christ. Christ going to resurrect you. You know, they were taught that from young. That's why they were, and they were built up. That's why they were able to endure the, church, the torture that they went through. Okay? That's why they was able to, because they prepared themselves for it. All right? Right. Exactly. Get Matthew 16, 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A lot of times when I hear brothers and sisters break down, take up his cross and follow me, you go, oh, that means if you fall on hard times, you can't pay your bills. It ain't talking about you can't pay your bills. It's talking about death. If you are not willing to give up your life. Read it again. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny yourself. And take up his cross. Take up your cross. Be willing to die. Be willing to sacrifice your life. Go ahead. And follow me. And follow me. Go ahead. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. How do you try to save your life? You deny the Lord. Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't, I'm not with them Israelites. No, no, that black Jesus, I'm not with that, sir. No, I don't believe in that crap. Uh-uh. See, I married a preacher. We worship white Jesus. Read that again. 
For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You're going to lose your life. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Go ahead. And whosoever will lose and his life. And whosoever will lose his life, sacrifice your life. For my sake shall find You're it. You're going to find your life, meaning eternal life. The kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what he's talking about. I hope everybody understand that. You better meditate on that over and over. You got to believe it. Now. Give me the map of Kazaria. I didn't finish with you, Esau. Give me the map of Kazaria. Uh, which one? Yeah, right there. I want y'all see that map right there? Y'all see Kazaria, right? I want y'all to, y'all see the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, right? The reason I want to highlight those two seas is because all the names around them have been changed pretty much. But the names of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea is still the same today. Give me the next map on Russia crisis. Give me the next map. Yep. Hey, hey, y'all see Black Sea? Black Sea. Black Sea right there. And right over to the right is the Caspian Sea, right side. Caspian Sea, blue, blue. Caspian Sea, Black Sea. Okay, you see Black Sea, Caspian Sea. Now Kazaria is right above that. Look. Look where Kazaria is. Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia. All of that is Kazaria. All of that. Hey, give me uh, Wikipedia. Type in, uh, not type in. I gave it to you, Tonga. Uh, I, uh, right there. Read that. Tonga. Tonga or Tamaga literally means stamp or seal in Mongolian and designates emblematic symbols which were. Now, that's all I wanted. Tomga means a seal or a symbol, right? Give me, that's a Khazar's hat. Give me the next one. Right there, read that. The current shield and symbol of Ukraine. The crest of Ukraine. Crest of Ukraine. Corresponds to the so-called Khazarian Tomga. Symbol. Or Tomga Jazaro. Belonging to the old Khazarian Empire. Belonging to the old Khazarian Empire. From where the Khazarian Mafia arises and originates. Y'all see that? This is them. This is them. I can't get a bomb. Can I, can I get a bomb over here? Give me the next picture. Now we'll look, but look, I don't care about the, the title. Look in the background. You see the symbol right there on the wall. Give me the next one, the next picture. Look on the flag. Look at the flag! It's the same symbol from old Kazaria. Yes, he's Jewish. Amalek. Give me the next one. Look right there. Pull it back out. Not too close. I want people to see it. That's the same old Kazarian symbol, the Tomga. That's them. Give me the next one with America. You see how America backs them? You see how America backs them? Why? Because they're all in it together. Now, give me the video. Or it says uh, Ukraine Trident National Symbol. It's, it's a link, I believe. It might be. I'm not sure if it's a video. Let me look. It's, it's, a, it's an article. Nope, nope, nope. It's an article. It says Ukraine President Vladimir. It's a link. It says Ukraine, it's R-F-E slash R, -L. yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> now y'all see the symbol once again, right there. Let's go through it. Raise it up. They want to upgrade the Trident emblem. Go ahead, raise it up. Raise it up. This is their symbol. No, no, wait, wait. You see that, oh, that cross right there? Y'all ever seen that cross right there before? Germany wore that cross. That's the German cross. Raise it up. Raise it up. They're looking. Up. Now, this is the old member. That, that, this is the ancient one. They, they dug it up. Y'all can still make it out, right? That's it right there. Raise it up. Uh, on that picture there, Holding on the top left, you see it right there? It's right there. Yep, that's it. Okay, raise it up. 
Right there on the flag right there. This is the Khazar Empire. Raise it up. Yep, with the German, pull it back down. With the German cross right there on the jacket. German cross. Raise it up. These are your old Nazis. This is them. There's the Khazar symbol. Raise it up. Hanging it up. Hey, hey, Bishop, so yes, when sir. Putin say he fighting Nazis, he knows something that we just finding out. That's right. Exactly. Right? Like you said, Putin said it on national TV. He said, I'm fighting Nazis. America was like, no, no, don't listen to him. He's crazy. Like, he's not crazy. And a lot of you black men ran over there to protect these people. And they hate your guts. I'm going to show you that too. Raise it up. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Give me the next one. Uh, it's a TikTok. TikTok video. You can X out of that. Uh, yeah. Put it on the screen over there. I want some volume. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Do y'all see what he did? He smacked him and made him take a banana, calling him what? A monkey. That's what he's doing. Give me the next video. Hey, hey, uh, yeah, give me the next one. Yeah, that one. Yep. Start at two, two, how long is that? How long? Start at 2.34. Two minutes, 34 seconds. Pay close attention. It's the Can Ukraine. Inside the disc? Many of the students we spoke to said they'd come south to the Hungarian border because of phone footage like this from border crossings into Poland. Videos purporting to show foreigners being treated differently by Ukrainian border guards at the long queues going west into Poland, something the UN's High Commissioner for Refugees has acknowledged was happening. Augustine's university lectures for medicine were due to start properly in March. Aspirations derailed for now by war. Well, you understand the that these, they're there for, to learn medicine, to become doctors. I want you to understand, don't look at them and be like, oh, those are homeless people. No, no, no. They were in, these are students in school to become doctors. Go ahead, play on. Aspirations derailed for now by war. At the border crossing he first went to, he says there was a policy of large groups of black people being separated from Ukrainians. Did somebody actually say that to you? How do you know that that was the case? They didn't actually say it, but we could observe it. In what way? How did you observe that? Mm -mm. We saw, like, we were in a queue. At first, blacks were, it wasn't like that. We were all moving together. That it got to a time. Blacks were somewhere else, and other, let me see, other white colored skin were also somewhere else, and they were actually moving a little bit faster. The blacks weren't going at all. Did they separate the queues? Yes. So black people were in one queue and white people were in another queue? Mm -hmm. Black people are eventually getting across into Poland, though. But unlike Ukrainians who are being picked up by friends and family, foreign students, for example, have to wait longer at places like Pyszemysz in Poland. Właśnie odprowadzamy pana, który chodzi po przemyślu bez dokumentów. Nie wiem po co. Żadnych dokumentów. Last night, patrols from the Polish far right confronted refugees in that town. In one case, chasing groups of black people through the street. In normal times, people from African nations would need to apply for Schengen visas to go from Ukraine to Poland. But because of the war, there's now no visa requirement on anyone entering countries like Poland from Ukraine. In a statement, the Ukrainian foreign ministry said there was a first come, first serve policy at the border independent of race or nationality. They also said that because of active fighting, they were encouraging foreign students to stay in their place of residence. This carriage is full of young Moroccans. 
all from the same faculty of medicine at Kharkiv University, full of dreams dashed. The door shattered our dreams. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen to us. We can't know what, what, are we going to be a future doctors or not. Did you always want to be a doctor? Yes. Yes, since, since I was skip a child. Skip it up ahead, let me see something. And uh, our skip parents... Skip it up ahead. Skip it up, skip it up, skip it up. Okay, give me the next video. Hey, give me the next hey, video. Hey, Bishop, yes, can sir. I say something? Yeah. For those of your Negro Christians, let me tell you how stupid you are. Do you guys know that since this war started with Russia and Ukraine, Fine. Joe Biden gave Ukraine at least $150 billion. Mm -hmm. Counting. And the war's not even still over. Now, you know this what the Democrats is pushing in the black community now? They're pushing, uh, what you call that thing? Uh, uh, six, uh, four K and a meal, what you call that? Of reparation. Reparation. You, 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 and some of them fall for it. Mm -hmm. You know why they're pushing it? Because they know your Negro is the one who put Joe Biden in office and Joe Biden did nothing. So now they're pushing on it. Why your guys are they're pushing it? So your guys can vote for them again. Yep. And after you vote for them, guess what they're going to say? Oh, we put, it, we put it in Congress, it just didn't pass. And your niggas continue for, for the same okie dokie. Exactly. Go ahead. Next video. Pay attention. I'm, I'm a lady, they might let me in. So I was right Wait, there, wait, she said, I'm a lady, they might let me in. Go back, go back, go ahead, play it. I'm, I'm a lady, they might let me in. So I was right there by the steps and um, the guy by the train, I don't know what they're called. Yeah, this guy literally, he's a big man. He pushed me off the steps. And then I tried to get on again. He pushed me, but he kept saying, ladies first, ladies first. So I looked at him and said, I'm a lady. And he just stared at me and looked away. Made way, and uh, he let uh, Ukrainian women pass. Only Ukrainian women. There was another black lady behind me. I don't know. I do not know her. But uh, the two of us were standing right there and watching all this happen. So we could do nothing, and we just stood there and looked the guy closed the door we tried to rush to the next wagon same thing was happening so the uh, the train just um the train just left us yeah well i was just i was shocked because i did not know the extent of the racism i did not know i thought maybe okay fine i'm a lady so obviously they'll let me in because that's the rule so i just i was in shock i was shocked i was shocked i wasn't even afraid i was shocked I actually just stood there and stared like whoa. Hey. I've seen some videos circulating of the same kind of thing happening. And with the guys it's worse. And I've seen another one where they were literally being dragged out of the train. Like they had a chance to get into the cabins, but then they were dragged out the whole way. Not just by the door, but they were dragged out. Hey, what what you all see taking place here is that that illusion that the white men have put on our people, it's bursting. Yep. Because Christianity and the white man say, we all is equal, and God, God love everybody. But when you go to these countries, what's, what you see happening is black people, our people being treated like crap. You understand? And these same people is Christians, man. Okay, so that bubble, that illusion that the white man put on us is bursting. Okay, that's what you see happening. She getting a rude, our people is getting a rude, a, a rude awakening to, to the white man being the devil, our enemies. These people hate us. Yeah, but then she say, I was shocked. <laughs> After all history, you were shocked. She's shocked because she's Christian. Yeah. Because in Christianity, they teach them that lie. Yeah. We're all equal. We all love each other. That's a lie. Yeah, this is why you see our people talking about let's pray for them. No, let's pray for the destruction. Yes, that's what we should do. Exactly. Pray for the destruction. More bomb, please. <laughs> hey, give me Job 5 and 8. Actually, uh, 5 and 11. I'll start there. Job chapter 5, verse 11. To set up on high those that be low. So, the Lord's purpose regarding us is to set up on high those that be low. Right now, we're low. But he's going to set us up on high. Go ahead. That those which mourn may be exalted to safety. That those which mourn, we're the ones mourning now. Like our sisters and brothers over in, that's in the Ukraine. They're, they were mourning, okay, under the spell of witchcraft. Mourning that we, we may be exalted to safety, God. He disappointed the devices of the crafty. See that? He, God disappointed the devices of the crafty. Remember what we read in Psalms 83? They were the crafty, God. 
so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Uh, put that up next to the dollar bill. Read that real quick. Look at the back of the one dollar bill. What do those words mean in Latin? Anuit coeptis. Anuit coeptis. Our enterprise is now a success. Our enterprise is now a success. Go ahead. Novus ordo seclorum. Seclorum. A new order of the ages. A new world order. Go ahead. The all-seeing eye and the pyramid was and still is the symbol of the Illuminati. A secret society formed by a secret, uh, a secret cable of Freemasons. Cabal, Cabal of Freemasons. Mm -hmm. They went on to become skull and bones. And now what is commonly referred to as the new world order. Now give me the dollar bill. So a new coeptus, our enterprise success. Enterprise success. But if you notice, like at the bottom it says 1776. It's not really finished yet. There's still more. This is why they're pushing the uh, population control and things of that nature. Trying to ex exterminate us. That's what they want to do. But they want to do it secretly. Novus order seclorum, new world order. Okay? So when we go back to Job 5 and verse, what verse was that again? Verse 12? Verse 12. Go ahead. Yes, sir. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So the Lord said he's going to disappoint them. They're not going to finish what they're attempting to do to our people. Go ahead. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Mm -hmm. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. To be carried headlong means you crack your head and die. That's what the Lord's plan for them is. Come on. They meet with darkness in the daytime. When it's high noon, God said, I'm going to bring them down. Go ahead. And grope in the noonday as in the night. Uh huh. But he saveth the poor from the sword. See that? That's our people. He said, but he saveth the poor from the sword. So what we read in Revelation 12 about the dragon went to make war with the remnant of his seed, which keep the commandments and of the testament of Jesus. The Lord said, listen, I'm going to save you. I'm going to save a remnant of you. I'm not going to let all of y'all die. A remnant is going to be saved. Read that again. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth. From their lies. Go ahead. And from the hand of the mighty. Come on. So the poor have hope. So brothers, sisters, we have hope. Go ahead. And iniquity stoppeth her mouth. And iniquity shall shut the hell up. Go ahead. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. I want y'all to pay close attention to that part. Happy is the man whom God correcteth. God corrects us for a reason. Give me that in Romans 5. We're coming back here. Romans 5 and 3. The correction has a purpose behind it. You might think you are at the pinnacle of your strength. The Lord says, no, you're not there yet. Read that. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, mm -hmm. and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame. So when we go through hardships, hard times, that ain't the Lord uh, hating us. That's the Lord trying to build us. Give me that in Sirach 2. And verse 5, he's trying to build us into the perfect man of Israel, the perfect woman of Israel. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire. We are the gold tried in the fire of adversity, God. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. See that? And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. We must go through adversity to be built, to prepare ourselves our souls, our minds for what is to come. So the Lord said, I got to put you through some stuff right now. Because if the enemy comes now, you all go back to worshiping white Jesus. I hope you all understand it. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Job 5. Job chapter 5, verse, seven, verse uh, 17. 17. Come on. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. My wife left me. My husband left me. Oh, I got, I got uh, uh, put out of my house. So what? Endure it. The Lord's trying to build you. Oh, I'm sick. The Lord's trying to build, build you into something. He's trying to make a new creature out of you. That only comes through tribulation. That only comes through trials. Everybody understand that? Read on. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Come on. For he maketh sore 
and bindeth up. Mm. He woundeth and his hands make whole. Come on. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Those are the six trumps you'll read about, okay, in Revelation. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Give me that precept in Revelation eleven fifteen, for the seven. Here's the precept. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Free now go on back. R R Job 5, 19, one more again. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. He shall deliver thee in six trumps. That's tribulation. Go ahead. Yea, in seven. When the seventh trump is sounded, there shall no evil touch thee. The kingdom's going to be established. Go ahead. In famine. In he famine. Shall, he shall redeem thee from death. He shall redeem us from death. And in war. And in war. From the power of the sword. From the power of the sword. Go ahead. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. That's their lies. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. When destruction comes, brothers and sisters, when we see the missiles come, the Bible says, what? Thou sh it said, read, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it comes. Go ahead. At destruction and famine thou shalt Can we laugh. look at someone? Hey, hey, give me the, give me, give me, what? Raise it up. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Raise it up. Let me look. I want, no, 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 no. Uh, lower it. Let me look. Lower it. Raise it up so I can see. Right after the, yeah, over the top left. Yeah, yeah, just, just hit me there. Hit me there. Just, just go from there. This, read it again. And go and on through. Verse 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Now, you see here on the screen, you see a famine. There's going to come a time when we see the missiles coming, because we're going to be in the midst of that. Like it says in Psalms 91, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near thee. This is what it's talking about. This is what it's talking about. That's that remnant of brothers and sisters that's alive at that time. I hope y'all understand that. I hope y'all understand that. Come on, where we at? Verse 22. Uh huh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. This is the kingdom, go ahead. And the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation. And shall not sin. You see that part right there? And shall not sin. Give me that precept in Isaiah 60, 21. And shall not sin. Isaiah chapter 60. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get it. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Y'all see that? Thy people also shall be all righteous. Go ahead. They shall inherit the land forever. Mm -hmm. The branch of my planting. The work of my hands. That I may be glorified. Read. A little one shall become a thousand. We're going to have a lot of kids. Go ahead. And a small one, a strong nation. Watch what he says. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. The Lord going to make that happen fast. Happen faster and faster. Go on back. Watch this. It ain't over yet. Back to ver Job 5 and verse uh, 24 again. Verse 24. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt visit thy habitation. And shalt not sin. Thy people shall be all righteous. Read. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great. See that? Thy seed shall be great. And thine offspring as the grass of the earth. And thy offspring as the grass of the earth. We're going to have a whole. Job is saying the same thing Isaiah prophesied about. He ain't study. He ain't make no, no if, ands, or buts. It's saying the same thing. Hey, give me a picture of the kingdom. Put that kingdom up there. That one right there. Put that up on the screen. That's what, it, that's what Job is talking about. Well, actually, you know who this is? This is one of his friends running their mouth, talking about prophetic prophecy, though. Now, give me Job 20 and 22. We're almost done. Job, Job 20. chapter 20, verse 22. Uh-huh. 
in the fullness of his sufficiency. In, in the fullness of his sufficiency. Talk about Esau. Remember, it said, Our enterprise of success, God said, I will uh, disappoint the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. It's saying the same thing here in verse 22. Read. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Mm -hmm. He's going to catch hell. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When it says every hand of the wicked shall be upon him, it's talking about NATO and all the other nations. Go ahead. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. Uh huh. And shall rain it upon him while he is eating. While he is eating. Now watch this. Here it come. He shall flee from the iron weapon. He shall f put it on the screen. He shall flee from the iron. Uh, that's the iron weapon. The same weapon that Oppenheimer came up with. Read it again. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. The bow of steel shall strike him through. Go ahead. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Not that one yet. Go back. Not that yet. <laughs> Go back to the... Yes. Read it again. He shall flee from the iron weapon, uh -huh. and the bow of steel shall strike him through. Here it come. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. The body is talking about is the earth. Many of these missiles are in the earth, in their silos. Go ahead. Yea, the glittering sword. That's the glittering sword. Go ahead. Cometh out of his gall. Uh-huh. Terrors are upon him. Terrors are upon him. Come on. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. Uh-huh. A fire not blown shall consume him. A fire not... You ain't got to blow when them nuclear weapons hit. That's not the type of fire you... <sighs> to blow it. The, the fan, the grow. This is nuclear fire. Go ahead. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. See that? It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Anybody left here in America, it's going to go ill with him. Go ahead. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. The, hey, give me the next picture. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity. Go ahead. And the earth shall rise up against him. The earth shall rise up against him. Go ahead. The increase of his house shall depart. The, give me the next picture. Come on. And now, his, there's going to be total destruction here. I hope you men and to see that. Total destruction. Go ahead. And his goods shall flow away. In see the, that? And his goods shall flow away. In the day of his wrath. In the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man. See that? This is the portion of a wicked man. Go ahead. From God. From God. And the heritage appointed unto him by God. Give me Jeremiah 40 now. We're almost done. We're almost done. Let me look. Let me look. Let me make sure. Yes, we're almost done. We're almost done. Jeremiah 49, 7, please. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Concerning Edom. These are all your Caucasians. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of Thus hosts. Thus saith who? The Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Is wisdom no more in Teman? Is wisdom no more in Teman? Because Teman, Germany, they had a lot of their top scientists that came here to Babylon to build up Babylon. Go ahead. Is counsel perished from the prudent? Uh huh. Is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep. O inhabitants of Dedan, mm -hmm. for I will bring the calamity hey, hey, of... Hey, hey, when it says, O inhabitants... What verse you at? Verse 8. Verse 8. O inhabitants of Dedan. Get Isaiah 21, 13 so we can understand Dedan. Y'all better write this down. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 13. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge. O ye traveling compa companies of Dedanim. Dedanim, that's Dedan right there, going back to verse 8. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan. Come on. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. He said, I'm going to bring Esau's calamity on you, you Arabs. Go ahead. The time that I will visit him. Come on. If great gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? Mm -hmm. If thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. Read but I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. His secret places, his, his secret meetings, his secret councils, his underground bunkers, things of that nature. Go ahead. And he shall not be able to hide himself. Esau's not going to be able to hide himself on this day. Come on. His seed is spoiled, mm -hmm. and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. See that? 
His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not meaning he's going to be destroyed, eliminated. That's what the Bible says. Come on. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. Why would God preserve their fatherless children alive? For slavery. Captivity. Go ahead. And let thy widows trust in me. Uh huh. For thus saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup. Esau, uh, Esau's judgment, he didn't want to drink the cup of the Lord. Go ahead. Have assuredly drunk. They it. shall surely drink the cup of the Lord. All the judgments shall come upon them. Go ahead. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? God says, are you he that shall altogether go unpunished? Go ahead. Thou shalt not go unpunished. God says to Esau, you shall not go unpunished. But thou shalt surely drink You are going to drink the judgments of God, Esau. Come on. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Bozrah, Bozrah shall, is the capital city of Edom. Go ahead. Shall become a desolation, mm -hmm. a reproach, a waste, and a curse. Uh -huh. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Read. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up to the battle. All the nations, primarily NATO, is going to rise up against America. Babylon. Go ahead. For, lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised, despised. America's doing so much wickedness in the earth, all nations are going to go, look at this. We got to take this nation down. That's why they make the American dollar strong and all other dollar currencies weak. Go ahead. And despised among men. Come on. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee. In the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, like Caucasus Mountains. That holdest the height of the hill. Uh -huh. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle. They make their nest as high as the eagle. Remember they landed on the moon and said the eagle has landed. Do you have a, do you have a picture of that for me? IT. <coughs> IT. Do you have a picture of the, the moon landing? Moon landing? Come on. Under images. Go ahead, put it on the screen. This is the, put it on the screen. This is the moon landing when they said the eagle has landed. So we're talking about America right here. Where, where you at, Cap? Uh, the middle of verse 16. Come on. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Read. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. Uh -huh. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. Why does he say as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah? What is America pushing? Same-sex relations, same-sex marriage, transgenderism. This place shall be destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Verse 18 again. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man? That I may appoint over her. The Lord is the only one. Go ahead. For who is like me? He said, who is like me? Go ahead. And who will appoint me the time? Who's going to tell me when destruction is coming on Edom? Go ahead. And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? What shepherd? What warrior can stand before me? Watch this. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom. God's counsel is against Esau. Edom. Go ahead. And his purposes. Listen good. That he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. The inhabitants of Teman, that's their scientists here. Go ahead. Surely the Watch least. This. Surely the least of the flock. Watch, write this down. That's the Israelis, modern day Israel. Read it again, surely. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. So when Israel goes to war, it's going to draw America into the war. Read it again, surely. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Hey, put some pictures up on the screen there with the helicopters and all that. I want them helicopters. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Read that again. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate Surely with them. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Obadiah 1 verse 7, please. 
We're almost done. We almost only got like three more verses. Obadiah, Obadiah, Obadiah. Obadiah. Seven through ten. Obadiah, verse seven. Read. Obadiah, verse seven. All the men of thy confederacy. All the men of thy confederacy. That's NATO. That's the EU. Go ahead. Have brought thee even to the border. They've brought America even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee. That's the evidence. The men that were at peace with thee, their allies. Have deceived thee. Have deceived thee. Go ahead. And prevailed against thee. And prevent. That's showing you prophetically NATO is going to turn against the United States of America. Go ahead. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound See that under part? thee. They that eat thy bread, that's the EU. They, eat, they share in everything with America. They that eat their bread with thee, what? Have laid a wound under thee. Laid a trap under thee. Go ahead. There is none understanding in him. There's no understanding in America. All of, all, I want to just go down to verse 10. That was it? B verse 8. Yes, sir. That was it on verse 7. I want to go down to verse 10. Verse 10. Thy violence I'll, against, for thy violence. Listen, listen. We're going to read 7 through 10. Yes, sir. Verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? See that? The wise men is teeming. That's here. Their wise men are their scientists, their astrologers, things of that nature. Those same scientists and their kids that came here to make America great, the Lord said, I'm going to destroy, destroy your wise men. Okay? And understanding out of, the, out of the mouth of Esau uh -huh. and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed mm. to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Now watch, was that 10? No, sir, that was verse 9. Read. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother now Jacob. Now he's going to tell you why God's doing it. Why? What was the reason? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. For the violence they did against their brother Jacob. Where Jacob? Go ahead. Shame shall cover thee. Shame shall cover Esau, Edom. And thou shalt be cut off forever. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Now, New Testament precept. Here's the precept. Revelation 17. Let's start at 16 and read down. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. The ten horns is NATO. Go ahead. These shall hate the whore. They shall hate America. America's the whore. And shall make her desolate. Shall make her desolate. And naked. And naked. And shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire. They're going to burn. Hey, can you, you put, put some things on the screen? Come on, man. They're going to burn. Read that part again because I didn't get the impact. Read it again. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. They're going to burn America with fire. Go ahead. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. God put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. And to agree. Uh-huh. And give their kingdom unto the beast. So until, they're going to support America for a limited time. Go ahead. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Until our prophesying in this earth is finished. Then war is going to break out destruction. Go ahead. And the woman which thou sawest. And in case you were, who, who is that whore? Go ahead. Is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. Now from there, watch this. Revelation 6 and 12. We're almost done. We're almost done. I know I keep saying that, but we are. Let me, look. Let, me, let me look. Let me look. Do I want to get that? Yes, go ahead. Revelation 6, 12. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. That's destruction. Hey, y'all could put some images of nuclear bombs up there, you know. Yes. Look alive. Come on. And the heaven departed as a scroll. And the heaven departed as a scroll. That's what you're looking at. Go ahead. When it is rolled together. Uh-huh. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Mm-hmm. And the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth. And the great men. And the great men. That's and, NATO and all the allies. And the rich men. And the rich men. And the chief captains. And the mighty men. 
and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains uh -huh. and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Yes, these are the, this is what they're going to hide in. Go ahead, put them on. Go across the screen. Go ahead. This is what they're going to hide in. Read that part again. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Last scripture, last scripture, last scripture. Zephaniah 2 and 1. I just love it so much. I just like, I just want to read it. I just love this scripture. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. I want all y'all to pay very close attention to this. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. This is for you men and women that sit at home. The Bible says gather yourselves together. Come on. Yea, gather together. Oh, nation not desired. We're the nation not desired. You saw what's going on in U Ukraine. You see what happened in America. We're the nation not desired. Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree. Before God's judgment brings forth. Go ahead. Before the day pass, says the chat. Before the day pass. Put some pictures up right there. Before the, this is gathering together. We must gather ourselves together. Before the day of destruction comes. That's the day of the chaff. We must gather ourselves together read before the fierce anger of the lord come upon before the fierce anger of the lord brings forth was that it no sir go ahead before the day of the lord's anger come upon you before the read that part again before the day of the lord's anger come upon you read seek ye the lord all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment seek righteousness seek meekness it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Because when the day of the Lord's anger comes, there's going to be a mighty destruction. And after that destruction, when the kingdom is set up, put that on the screen and give me Revelation 3.9. This is what's going to happen to all these Nazis and all these Edomites. Read the scripture, Revelation 3.9. Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet mm -hmm. and to know that I have loved thee. So y'all hear that? Twelve tribes? Worldwide. Twelve tribes? Worldwide. Never give up? Never give, in. Never give up? Never give in. And with that, we say shalom. <laughs>